All right, uh, if we're starting, I suppose I should open Twitch. Here we go. Ladies no, and gentlemen, it is the time. It is Wednesday. Uh, technical difficulties. Uh, life just trying to find a way to crash everything in the studio, but I'm not going <laughs> to let it happen. Nay, that's not going <laughs> to no. be the case this evening. <laughs> This morning, this afternoon, wherever you may be, how's it going, everyone? We are uh, hopefully going to be doing a show in a little bit. Hi, Steve, husband, love. And we do got a lot to talk about. Do we have the paper back? Mm -hmm. No, we don't. No, but uh, it seems like the FERPs have stabilized. Mm. Oh, good. I did absolutely nothing, so I. <laughs> <laughs> Just you know, as network. Much as, uh, <laughs> You know, I joke around, I have to joke around, because uh, let's be honest, um, XFCE, it's a very basic desktop manager, but the thing I keep going back to, it's predictable, it's stable, that code base is solid. Mm -hmm. You don't ever I'm like, hey, XFCE right now. <laughs> <laughs> I like KWIN because of all the all options. The fancy, that fancy, wishy stuff, yeah. <laughs> I have most of the effects disabled. <laughs> but it's still there, man. <laughs> yes, they're there. I just don't use them. <laughs> it's like transparency, gone. Um, the blurring of said transparency, gone. And actually, if you're using KD, disable Blurfish. That's the blur thing fish? that blurs the, the background. Oh, yeah. yeah. Disable that, and you will get a noticeable market performance improvement in mm -hmm. games. I'm not joking. Mm. <laughs> the wow. one thing I'll, um, it's not Kate. Well, no, uh, it's not XC so much, but I mean, it's definitely synonymous as Thunor. Thunor has an issue mm -hmm. if you're trying to delete a bajillion files through the GUI. You just got to go do something else while it indexes that. <laughs> oh, yeah, it takes a while. <laughs> that, <True>. I <laughs> forget that it happens infrequently enough to when I do it, I'm like, oh, that should have been an RMRF. Man, yeah. mm -hmm. all right. Well, let's go do something because that window is going to hang like that for the next 15 it minutes. It hangs forever. <laughs> That's true. I usually use MLFM when I want to delete a lot of files <laughs> in a GUI. This is fast. <laughs> there is or Midnight Commander. <laughs> I just take out the Does directory. that count as a GUI? Because I think that's a yeah, CLI. Yeah, it's CLI. <laughs> yeah, it's CLI, but... Yeah, it's easy to use. So I call it a GUI. You know? And you can use the mouse, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's cheating. It's the cheaty version <laughs> kind of CLI, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't need that connected in and that's together. Oh yeah, that's one. Man, Pedro, you need to go play with all the cool new DLSS stuff. Oh, that was so yes, cool, Yes, on ben. my 1000 yeah. series NVIDIA GP. <laughs> Aww, That's okay. I'm it, okay. <laughs> yeah. That is a problem. Even my 1080 I could use FSR. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> and if I want to do the FSR upscaling as well, I can use X-Render. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can always use the vintage. Um... Yes. <laughs> uh, I remember uh, I asked uh, Aaron Platner from NVIDIA. It's like, okay, so uh, how about that dynamic super sampling that you guys have for um, for Windows? Well, you can do that on Linux with XRender. You just create a virtual screen with a bigger resolution. And then yeah. uh, when you start a game, you assign you just pass an X command to start it at that bigger resolution, and then that does the same thing. It, yeah. yeah, how about That's you how uh, <laughs> add that to the NVIDIA control panel? Like, uh, we're yeah. not gonna do that. I, okay. Oh God, I've been wanting that for <laughs> ages, Pedro, because I play games on three monitors, so it's just... Yeah. yeah. It's so I hard have, to hear I both even... of you talking from my DLSS <laughs> tower. Oh, the tower of 2060. How's those six gigabytes of VRAM treating you? Uh, you know, I'm to run playing games at 2160p, so pretty damn well, Pedro. Pretty damn well. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
that is like the um <clears throat> this is uh, to the point this is how i knew um i was playing around with hellblade last night because <clears throat> they did an update I'm like hey we've had a dlss yep. uh to help play that's rough that's rough it's <laughs> very rough it, you can get it enabled cut you. off the motion blur you don't want that in a game that's using dlss just turn it off <laughs> not a problem in tomb raider they've updated tomb raider the past um what was it the second tomb raider got dlss 2.0 and the other one already had it i went back and i did a little video on that just like hey it's pretty cool it's pretty neat i don't mind it but the implementation in hellblade is when you pan the camera around your character it looks like you um are getting ready to go like you're charging up to power up i mean it is <laughs> visible seriously shield. no the motion blur is crap <laughs> yeah in hellblade because it's not a problem in doom raider yes in hellblade there we go see mm. gotta put a point on things because <laughs> pedro hates motion blur it makes his tummy hurt I do, but in Hellblade, it was <laughs> it especially too. bad. <laughs> it's bad when you have it, in, in, <laughs> in most games, sometimes I only notice it if there's like a slight performance dip and a frame happens to take a bit longer on screen. As it's catching up, you see a lot of motion blur and I go like, that's getting disabled. Yeah. With Hellblade, it was as soon as I touched the mouse, and it's like, oh God, no. <laughs> Uh, so, it was one of those. Yeah, no, it's like <laughs> options. Can we turn that off? Oh, you can't turn off just motion blur in the options. You have to reduce the entire preset. Right. Which engine is this using? Oh, Unreal Engine. Right. Let's go to the config file. Motion blur zero. S. <laughs> oh, there we go. It's gone. <laughs> Let's talk about the wonders of the Unreal Engine in the uh, GTA remix. What do you think of that? <laughs> the uh, speculation is that they used AI to do the remaster. Oh, it's a speculation, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Darkly. <laughs> Which explains why everything is so broken and the game, <laughs> like the physics are broken. The upscaling of the characters, it, it, it was already cartoony, and now it's even worse. It, mm -hmm. it It's just completely mental some of the proportions of the character mm -hmm. <laughs> interesting i mean all right <laughs> yeah that was funny <laughs> this, this is like this is the visual gag right tough nut donut yeah. mm -hmm. and you know you got the donut you know ps2 level uh, it's missing some polygons it's a little rough a nut yeah. a nut get it <laughs> so in the remaster um <laughs> yeah. Really smooth things out there, didn't you, Rockstar? <laughs> uh, yeah, and the it was the like the background of one of the fast food places. That was uh, it had a joke about man meat, and the AI upscaler uh, saw that as uh, man heat, which also mm. funny, but it kind of destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, um, what's his name? Uh, Steven from um, Gamers Nexus did the video and yeah. a little news update earlier this week. Um, and he's like, yeah, because we talked about it a long time ago that there was a skew for a 2060 12 gig. Mm -hmm. It's like, why would mm. you ever do that? And that's what he said in the video. Like, aha. <laughs> let me, let, let, allow me to tell you about the market that you might not be familiar with being gamer tech oriented channels yeah <laughs> content creation because no one can get a hold of a 36 minute i got a comment go looking it's got like 70 or 80 upvotes then you got like the 12 year olds like you can't edit 4k video on a 26 go go, go eat another glue stick child um yeah <laughs> Uh, right those back. are the people that buy into the uh, Linus Sebastian school of technology. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, here's the reality of it. I will, first off, I'm not buying anything until I see what Intel puts on the table because I'm more than capable of spite buying something from Intel just to spite NVIDIA <laughs> at this point. <laughs> 
and um, <laughs> all, all you got to do, you got to two two things Intel in stock and better than a reasonably priced. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> these are these are not high bars. You give me like twenty seventy performance, but yeah, there's the very much reality of the non-existent um, budget editing card with twelve gigs, which would be the I have been excited about the 3060 for over a year. <laughs> you just can't find them. Well, I mean, you can find them, but the 100% markup, that's not a good deal. You know, if I'm paying $800 for a 12 gig 2060, the A4000's 12, 1300 bucks. <laughs> so you, you're at the, well, might as well <laughs> point of that money equation. Um, and if you're looking at a quadro and thinking might as well, something's gone wrong. <laughs> this this is kind of my point. When would yeah, when the quadro's like in the ballpark of the bottom end tier. Yeah. And um like a twenty six, if they can they start putting out tourings with twelve gigs, they're gonna sell them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it I understand a lot of people not in that market, but being someone in both markets, yeah, I'm like, yeah, that makes plenty of sense because uh, I have to really shock and jive a lot of times when I'm rendering out uh, UHD. When I did the uh, video I released this week with the DLSS, all of that was captured in native 4K and it was rendered. That, that was a rough one to get out the door, but I did because I've learned tricks. What is this? All right. Quit stabbing yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> no, the, uh, there is one point of contention that I've had with Gamers Nexus, which is, according to them, the only things that are worth buying are either the entry level or the really high-end stuff. The mid-range, like, say, the 3700X, according to Gamers, Gamers Nexus, it's useless. Why bother? It's like, uh, because some people can't afford the higher-end version, and they would still like slightly better performance than the mid-range, and they can't afford it? Mid-range is just not a profitable market. <laughs> but, okay, I get from the, um, like, the OEM sides, absolutely. But from the side of someone who's doing testing and actually, you know, consumer advocacy to a certain degree. Really? But I mean, can't really, you, you don't see the point. Can, can't you look at the um, number digits on the benchmark graph and make up your own mind? Is that the person patting you on the head? And giving you a hug? No, that's the thing. He did the benchmarks and he said it's uh, it's not worth it. It's like, oh, it's not worth it. Well, uh, here's 300 of my pounds, AMD. I'll buy the processor that's not worth it. It's different use cases, man. I was building a Gen 1 Threadripper system when Gen 2 was getting released. Like, that's silly. That's not worth it. Like, I have a use case for this. This is within the budget and this is going to do what we want. You know, I almost got an argument with Lewis Rosman. <laughs> Why? As one does. <laughs> he does have very strong opinions. Not all of them, you know, correct, but he does have strong opinions. Well, I, I, I do my best in my old age not to engage in arguments on the internet. He posted a video. Like, this is why no one uses Linux. And he was capturing oh, his that uh, desktop that he was trying <laughs> to open DaVinci Resolve. And it would start, but it was flipping out on the video thing. Like, um, all right, first off. And that was it. That was it. He didn't even say anything. That was just the... You didn't, then he closes OBS. And I see that. And I'm like, that. that's got to be... Like you watching someone trying to do a repair video <laughs> with a soldering iron that's not plugged in because they didn't read the instructions. And then blaming. Um, <laughs> it's like, the, trust me, from personal experience, 
don't watch medical shows with doctors. They get angry. So I, I started as like, man, <laughs> you know, I, I got a DaVinci Resolve installed video, a recent one, and the one before that with tens of thousands of views of people who read the manual. This is how you get it and set up. And I'm like, first off, like out of the gate, why, why are you trying to blame the limit? Ugh. You're trying to run it on a laptop. It's probably got an Intel iGPU. DaVinci Resolve is not compatible with that. It's not. <laughs> Never has been. It's got a requirement of 32 gigs of RAM that doesn't stop people. Well, when you have 32 gigs of RAM, you realize that, uh, I mean, when you have 64, it just makes it more comical. Like that, that, that's where it's at. And, um, and every time I bring that up, I just have like TTVM. It's like time till virtual machine because like, but I run mm -hmm. virtual machines. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I have a laptop with 32 gigs of RAM. <laughs> <laughs> Admittedly, I have two virtual machines installed. One with Windows 11. That's right. <laughs> and the other one with uh, Mac OS Catalina. That's right. <laughs> I don't start them up that often, but they're there. They work. <laughs> I have 32 gigs of RAM in the streaming box. Primarily because it looked funny only having two sticks of RAM in a Threadripper system. <laughs> Eight slots, two six. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, ah. <laughs> but let's see. I got a door open. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, fifteen, sixteen, twenty. 27 tabs. We got OBS. We got Discord. We got audio backends extra browsers and um, doing a bunch of memory intensive stuff. And we've, we've racked up a grand total while streaming and recording for about 10 gigs in. <laughs> yeah, no, the only time that uh, my RAM usage goes uh, above 10 is if I'm playing a video game, if Chrome uh, has decided to start leaking memory or if Kwin oh, has decided yeah. to leak memory. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, that, this is this is my favorite thing, though. I mean, um, in Darkwing, you have the right attitude about it. I got 32 gigs because I can deal with it. Whatever. You don't have to justify <laughs> stuff. That, that upsets me when people start doing like the weird mental gymnastics of like this bizarre one particular use case that they've come up with in their own heads. So they could justify yeah. doing something I'm like, really? Come on. Just like, listen, if you take anything away because I want to, there's a perfectly valid reason to do something. Four gigs. Uh, I upgraded the, the RAM on the HP AIO because it only came with four gigs. It's like, well, I have these two, uh, four gig sticks that I could just drop in there. And then I SSH in while um, Cody is running and playing like a radio station. It's like, let's see how much RAM it's using. Oh, it's using 230 megabytes of RAM. Huh. No. <laughs> I think I might <laughs> put back one of the two gigabyte sticks that I took out and just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, you guys went down with them. Um, old Tannenbaum. Um. Yeah. <laughs> that one I actually remember Arthur and saying it's like oh this game is using 14 gigabytes of RAM what I remember yeah. you guys in discord doing that to the point where I just started the game and moved around but well, wow okay how <laughs> so yeah it's like uh, open up the uh, resource management holy yeah it is <laughs> <laughs> and there was that fun time Jordan and I were playing this motocross game which is still available on Steam <laughs> 
just had a memory. Motorbike. Like, motorbike. <laughs> and Jordan disappeared. And just something in the back of my head made me think. I'm like, Wait a minute. <laughs> got to a terminal that I had a couple hundred megs left. Uh, I wonder if that game's are, ever are been thing. updated. <laughs> Yeah, the TTL on that game is about 40 minutes with 16 gigs. I have that. I think we're oh, good. <laughs> pull that down, pull that down. Got a little bit of feedback. Told you we got some feedback, Pedro. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Although it was pretty tame, all things considered. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually. <so. laughs> well, you, you see, that's where you got to take a break, man. Like, if you bring break out the gnome hater rate each and every single episode, people just get dull to it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who knows? I might actually convince someone that no. uh, maybe Gnome isn't quite it, it's, so good. It's filtered out to a buzzing noise. It's just whinging. <laughs> well, I'm going to do some more of that. <laughs> Although I was running Gnome on the AIO. <laughs> For a second there, it's like, okay, let's uh, touch screen. So let's now that it's working, let's actually put Gnome on it. Yeah, test it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How big is the touch sluggish. screen? 20 inch. That's pretty decent. It's a very nice little kiosk that's... You turn it on, goes into Kodi, you pick radio station you want to listen to or a playlist that you already have set up. That's it. And then you... you are you done listening? Either tap the power button on the side or actually touch the uh, the power button in Cody and it shuts off so it's like right there on your desk yeah. you can just reach over and do it uh, no it's on the corner of the living room on the other side of the living room <laughs> <laughs> so I got you a long stick <laughs> yeah or I need batteries but uh, there's this it's got a remote <laughs> no this is a Ah, Mouse boo. and keyboard. <laughs> boo, I thought you were going to break out like a dedicated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> it has a little dongle and you just plug it in and then it has an accelerometer for the mouse. And um, it's got the keyboard on the back. But it has dedicated volume buttons and media buttons, which are just ACPI compliant. So this Valve. will work with anything. Valve. <laughs> Bring back the Steam controller, but give it a slide out keyboard. Ooh, like the 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 add-ons for the DualShock and the Xbox 360 controllers that had just a keyboard that you plugged mm. in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just get your Steam controller, like, slide it out, tap, 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 slide it back in. You good? <laughs> uh, it was ten pounds, so that's like thirteen dollars. But yeah, it's it's pretty good. Twenty inch. Uh, the fact that the touchscreen <laughs> fought me a little bit and it didn't immediately work out of the box actually made me like it even more. I like when system that I buy does a little bit of that. It's like, oh, you're going to make me work for your for your work. Okay, fine. <laughs> we can tango. Hello, Cinemetro, and welcome. <laughs> it's pretty rare that um, I think about having an actual keyboard on something right up into the point where I'm trying to enter my Netflix password onto a TV. I'm like, oh, you... Whoa. This is gonna be a minute. <laughs> How long is the timeout? Because I'm going to need about five minutes. <laughs> or if you have to do any type of, like, network configuration and it's not DHCP. Oh, imagine that. Imagine keying in an IPv6. Mm. It's internal, just IPv4 internal, even if you have an IPv6 <laughs> external. Internal, it's all IPv4, it's fine. <laughs> I had to hand key one time in my life an IPv6. <laughs> wow. Oh. 
some lazy pointer. Started using Amazon URLs for passwords. That'll work. <laughs> yeah, uh, we were in Discord when that happened, <laughs> Linux nerds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you for the follow, Cinemetro. <laughs> Very nice. Welcome to the party. <laughs> Welcome to the not so serious side of Linux podcasting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, podcast is serious business, you guys. You gotta be professional. <laughs> we are professional. <laughs> we uh, are professional goofs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is put together, and uh, yeah, I think I'll grab one more refill, and uh, we can do one of those show things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want serious Linux podcasts, then watch the other one that Jill's in. Uh, there's a few others that I honestly stopped listening. I, I used to listen to the Ubuntu podcast, but uh, that's over. Yeah. <laughs> what is, um, I think, do they still do the bad mm -hmm. voltage thing? Yeah. <laughs> I, I haven't, I haven't heard a, an episode recently, but they were as of like last year. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're still doing. I have to look at my okay. RSS feed on that one. <laughs> yeah, I've got, they they do they do sometimes take breaks, and that's probably what happened. So I hadn't listened to them in a while. Oh, here's another thing I tried with a uh, Nightbot. I was watching Pedro play um, Disney's Dark Souls mm -hmm. last day, <laughs> and you beat me to it. You've like stopped. Like, okay, hey, look, there's the spam thing. We've gotten a couple of those. Mm -hmm. This is the new hotness with the uh, spam bots. Is like the space.com, like get free views and all that fun stuff. So I've set up a wildcard operator on Nightbot for anybody who types in a dot com. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah. It should work, but I've set it for like regular users and like new users. It like everyone mm -hmm. should be. If it's safe. the first time and they immediately drop right. a dot com, yeah, just can them immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if that made it to Twitch chat. <laughs> that should make it to Twitch chat. Yep. <laughs> Linux Nurus didn't. Linux Nurus got immediately um, mm. starred. <laughs> okay. But yes, with a space, it makes it to uh, Twitch chat. It's, and <laughs> Mir that's... is... Oh, apparently mirror.ppc not only gets uh, through to Twitch, as it automatically turns it into a URL. Hyperlink. What's that? HTTPS.mirror.ppc. Error name not resolved. Okay. Yeah, also, we, like we, we need to do, to do a new, um, <laughs> new funding <laughs> thing because we got to get linuxgame.cash. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Linux Game Cash Cast. What? No, no, no. I, I want that to redirect to Patreon. <laughs> yeah, Arthur, and I do that on Twitter all the time when I want to do a dot .com, but I don't want it to bring up the page. <laughs> it, do a space. <laughs> that is a good technique. <laughs> yeah, Twitter is a... Um... It could be in and out. The one one thing that irritates me on Twitter is, especially on mobile, is showing like a preview of something. Because if oh, it, I know. If it's not yeah. going to pull a preview of it, I'm not going to post it because no one's going to just randomly click on a link. I wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah, that's one one of the problems. That their previews are an issue. Yeah, it, it it seems that only certain websites get the rights to a preview on Twitter. Mm. Yeah, mm. fortunately, LinuxGameCast.com does. Nothing to do with that. I have an entire subsystem <laughs> dedicated for generating those cards built into the site that I've set up. It's not RNG, yeah. baby. Yeah. 
I got that. It works for Twitter, and I've set up one for face butts. I All figured, yeah. Yeah, that's why we get like a nice little um, picture image. Preview. It works on Facebook too when I post there. <laughs> oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> that's, this is a whole different card system to make sure it grabs the system for like, okay, I want you to grab this text and uh, put it with yeah. this picture every time you do a URL. Yeah, that, that has nothing to do with Twitter. <laughs> Twitter's like, hey, do I have my things there? Okay, I'll pull those tags in. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's some other sites that will actually do it, even if they haven't done that. But it's hit and miss. <laughs> I'm not a fan of hit and miss. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I remember yeah. when I was still actively using that. Facebook <laughs> that uh it would be rare to find a website that didn't automatically generate a thumbnail. Yeah, with, Facebook is good about well, that. hyperlinks yeah. and everything. The thing is, is it will try. Yeah. <laughs> what I don't like is, I, I don't want it trying. I want it yeah, to pull up exactly to make what sure I it want. Works You're right. On all mm -hmm. the social medias. I think yeah. You get the picture that I tell you to get, and you get the snippet that I tell you to pull. Not yeah. what you think is the right thing. Fave icon. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'll be back. Then we'll go do a show. Okay. <laughs> a thing that still throws me off is people uh, who put gifts as uh, animated gifts as their fav icons, because most fav icons are already gifts anyway. They're just not animated. But every now mm -hmm. and then, there's a website that has an animated fav icon. It's like. Why is that? Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> because annoying. you start, you might have a bunch of tabs open. It's like, why is that? What, what's going on there? No, it's when just it's little animated. Emotion. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, yesterday I played some. Um, Kingdoms of Amalur, which ah, that game <laughs> it was, there was so much hype around it, and the fact that they'd got oh, we got government money to make this game, and um, then it comes out, and it's so bare bones, it, it, everything is so very lightly implemented like, really? Mm. really? <laughs> it's got a big map and then the DLCs add a bit extra map on top of that, but it's it's so very light. So very light. Hmm. <laughs> yes, that's the key one. Uh, uh, that right there is the important <laughs> <laughs> I love Linux game cache. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> it was. Oh well, yeah, was Pedro. How was your three? breaks on Saturday? That's 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 nice. You get to do that every once in a while. Now that we have uh, <laughs> Sandman uh, back. <laughs> Sandy. I love you. I do. I really do. <laughs> Whenever you want to host uh, a show, I will gladly give out my seat for you because uh, you are my, um, well, Jill's already a regular co-host, so she doesn't count. So uh, outside of that, you and MT are very much my two other favorite uh, co-hosts. Sorry, everyone else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the two of you, uh, I very much enjoy watching a show when you guys are doing it so <laughs> yes a anytime either of you uh want is like i want to host a show let me know i will give out my position even yeah. lwdw if you'd like although the saturday are my preference because if i don't have to be up until 7 a.m <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> i spatter <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah, no, give, I actually give Pedro a, um, a break because you do four shows a week <laughs> here on Linux Gamecast. <laughs> I, I'm doing five shows total, so I feel your pain, Pedro. <laughs> and then full time job on top of that, and there's yeah. 
Ugh. It so yes, takes that, away that, that was time. nice. Actually, <laughs> being able to go to sleep at like 1 a.m. on Saturday, it's like, and then wake up and see Sunday morning, which <laughs> I don't yeah. get to do very often. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. But don't worry, I shall be back uh, <laughs> this week. There is going to be someone staying over that day too, so I'm gonna have to. Mm. Once we're done with the show, I gotta have to go because. <laughs> kind of only learned that yesterday. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so is it's it like, your cousin oh, again? okay. No, it it's um, no. it's uh, one of Nori's old uh, co-workers and friends from Portugal. Oh, nice. She's like, oh yeah, I haven't. We haven't been together in a while. I, Want to come and stay over? Can I come and stay over for a no, few days? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's and then convenient yesterday, now. She sidles up to me. It's like, a yeah. uh, person is coming to stay with us and she's going to be here on Saturday. It's like, that that's a little <laughs> short notice. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. You can do the show. We'll, we'll wait until you're done with the show. It's like, okay. <laughs> oh. Well, it is nice that, you know, you have a place in in um, England and that they, they your friends and family can come over from Portugal and stay with yeah. you that makes <laughs> I mean, life a lot less expensive I have expensive. slept on that couch <laughs> many many hours so <laughs> it is perfectly adequate so yes <laughs> hi empty Pedro summoned you earlier <laughs> did you hear <laughs> I was praising you empty yes <laughs> But yes, I will be there uh, this Saturday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's uh, it's one thing I like doing. It's like, wake up. It's like, ooh, there's the full show. It's like, okay, let's just listen to five hours of uninterrupted... Uh, poop talk <laughs> between Ven, Jordan, and Sandy. It's like, yep, I'm down for that. <laughs> Suo Media Temple? What's Suo? Yeah, what is that? Tetsudo Media Temple? <laughs> Oh, oh, you mean um, empty. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> empty is this. Oh, We sup. made sure to get Okay. Him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Media Temple himself. <laughs> we made sure he got that Media Temple shirt. We sh sent it to him after scale. Quite a few scales ago now. <laughs> wow. Is it coming back properly next year? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Cool. I still don't think it will be as big as normal, you know, because, mm -hmm. because well, for one, we don't have a lot of international travelers right now. And we do get a significant number of them that come to scale. <laughs> so it'll still probably be smaller, but it'll probably be bigger than the last one, which was just before the lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> It should be good, and we'll. And now that you know, we'll just everyone will have to prove vaccination status, yes. which is wonderful. <laughs> that was how I was able. How I wouldn't have gone to the convention I went to if it wasn't for that. Right. And okay. Everyone wearing masks and everything. So here, here in LA, it's you. You have to prove. You show your vaccination card at everywhere you go, restaurants. You know, even to get groceries. But it's working. Uh, here you show it the works. app. You <laughs> just pull up oh, the yeah, NHS the app. app. It's like, yeah. yeah, vaccination pass, give me. And then you bloop the uh, the readers like clear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> good. Yeah, it's kind of funny because every store is doing it different here. Because we have, you can use your card. You can use a photocopy of the card, or you can um, use a picture on your phone or the app. So. Yeah, and it's different. Yeah, no, different. Here in LA, it's a lot stricter. The... So. 
It's really flimsy. <laughs> it's just like paper oh, thing. Yeah, it's like, oh ours, yeah, that, there's the two dates that is, you yeah. got vaccinated and the, the vaccines you got. Just, so. It's just a cardboard little card. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ours, ours has CDC on it. So yeah, no, I use the app usually because it's like, okay, just sign into the app, put in the thing, they're done. <laughs> well, Mir, they're supposed to, and actually uh, by the end of the month, if they don't, they're going to start getting fined. People are going to, the diff businesses are going to start getting fined. They haven't fully, Good. they're, they're <laughs> yeah, they're, they're giving everyone time to ramp up for it because they, you know, have to hire someone to look at the cards when they enter and. It's a it's a process, but once they get it going, it'll be nice. All right, are we ready? Yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Let's pull that down. There we go. There we go. Good and good. <clears throat> All right, everyone. Not going to be a terribly long one, but it will be dense. Yes. <laughs> Not dense like that, just dense. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesday where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux, open source, and pretty much anything else we find interesting. I'm Vin, that is Jill, and over there is Pedro Mateus, and everyone watching this live on Twitch before <laughs> and after the fact. How's it going, man? We got a lot to talk about this week. I've been busy. I've been hard at work. <laughs> I've been playing around with all of the DLSS things this week this is kind of fun for me it's very novel if you're unfamiliar with that um what is it fidelity fx is the open source version that amd has released pedro you've played yes. around with that a couple of times it mm -hmm. basically allows proton you, g you can fsr yeah. all the things it's amazing <laughs> allows you to cheat you know you got a lower powered graphics card and you want to play at higher resolutions and mm -hmm. well you, know, you can't really go and buy a graphics card these days so it's a great technology to have in NVIDIA, you know, doing NVIDIA's way of things, like we have a closed source thing that uses, which I thought something I'd never get to use on this little 2060. Uh, they made it work with Proton. So I went and just played around with it. And it's great um, that we can use it now on Linux, I guess, for games that it's enabled. But what I've really been busy doing is, is anyone familiar with Wheel of Time? Have you heard about it? Yeah, I've heard of the name. I haven't watched it yet. Because <laughs> it's not out yet. There's probably a connection. Yeah. Um, ah, okay. Amazon, the trailer <laughs> Amazon's <laughs> released a trailer for it, and I'm kind of starving for some fantasy stuff or something to watch at this point in life. I'm like, come on. And yeah. um, I, I missed out on The Witcher. I, I didn't know anything about The Witcher outside of, like, I played the uh, third game when, the, um, you know, Superman Witcher came out on Netflix. I'm like, well, all right. Then I went back and read the books and I'm ready for series two of the Witcher. I'm like, yeah, I can be that guy. I'm like, ah, that's different. That's wrong. And well, I didn't want to miss out that on that opportunity for wheel of time. So I've been going back and um, listening to the wheel of time series so I can uh, appreciate it. I don't know. I, I, I nice. What, what are you, what are your thoughts on that? Cause you don't, that doesn't always lead to appreciation. Sometimes I found it infinitely better to go and I'm like, why is everyone else angry? That's a perfectly good TV series. Like, but it's moderately <laughs> or slightly like different than this other thing <laughs> that happened in the front. <laughs> in the source. Yeah. Can't do that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Vin, Steve and I just watched the trailer yesterday. It was um, on uh, YouTube. Uh, it's one of the ads on YouTube. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the thing. Pedro, you spent... 20 quid on a box Ten. that <laughs> 10 <laughs> <laughs> it was literally 10 pounds when you're done with it i guarantee you, you have great. 20 quid in it 
things. <laughs> More than that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I put my own RAM and my own SSD in it, so it's already worth more. But um, no, I only paid ten pounds for a HP um, Touch Smart three hundred, which came with an Athlon two X two two thirty five E, and um, yeah, it fought me a little bit. It absolutely did. The um, everything worked fine except. For the touchscreen. And I kind of wanted the touchscreen because I wanted to turn it into a media center, like mm -hmm. a little kiosk type of situation. Like there so. Yes. <laughs> and um, I eventually succeeded after spending a mm -hmm. great deal of time and having to sacrifice at least two chickens. I, I was lucky enough that it was full moon the other day. So I, I just sacrificed two chickens on a full moon. You, I am tired of you <laughs> excusing your chicken chicken sacrificing man like it's always always something i'm like why did you sacrifice i mean that i chicken? turned them into nuggets afterwards so there's that the, it's just getting the, ridiculous at this point just just admit it you like sacrificing chickens man. yes i do like me some chicken but uh yeah no the drivers for the next window touchscreen are Basically not existent in the kernel, and uh, if there's anyone left at Canonical or uh, Debian who doesn't ate my guts, please, please, oh please, um, package the next window touchscreen driver, please. It, it, it's called NW for me, like the 500 and 600 NVIDIA cards, that series, NW for me. So, yeah, thank you. Very much appreciated, don't. because I don't want anyone else to go through what I, I had to. No, buy a mouse, hippie. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. well i guess he does have long hair so he is considered a hippie <laughs> yeah, How about you, so, and <laughs> i had actually a great time at designer con last saturday it was a it's a convention for artists and artists that do the, the kind of work like Tokidaki and um, Giant Robot and some of like the vinyl dolls and, and unique artwork that's very science fiction and surreal and beautiful. And this was one of the first conventions you could attend in person here in SoCal since the pandemic. And, you know, they re required vaccination, which I was really happy about. I wouldn't have gone unless they had. <laughs> so I was happy about that. But we had a great time there. And the next two days, I'm off to Disneyland again. So I'm looking Very forward good. to that for our monthly uh, short vacation. <laughs> How many more months of monthly short vacations at Disneyland do you get stored up? You'll have to ask Steve Husband about, th about, about that. Actually, <laughs> I have a year, but I'm going to be renewing after a year. So. <laughs> so it's up to you, Steve. It's up to you. Um, yeah, no. I'll be going regardless, <laughs> Steve Husband. Last week... <laughs> We talked about um, a little thing that was going on, a little bit of internet drama, and Gnome kind of came out, and they're like, yo, we want to start a little internet slap fight in System 76. In like, the worst possible yo. way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, and, like, non-editorialized recap of that, uh, Gnome was complaining about System 76 not contributing to Upstream. That was kind of the gist of it part of it mm -hmm. uh, that was a part of it the the other one was that a lot of people from system 76 were going on social media and making it sound like it was everything was gnome's fault and uh that it, it was considered misinformation by the author of said post well system 76 has decided you know mm -hmm. what let's just shut some people up <laughs> right at the top of the thing Here's everything that we've contributed back upstream, specifically for the GNOME project. And that is the proverbial slap in the face that GNOME needed after they, um, I mean, that one developer Tell was allowed to post. this imaginary that. world where GNOME cares. <laughs> it's just whoever is in charge of any kind of PR at GNOME should have looked at that post and went, take that down, please. So, yeah, no, uh, but they didn't. So here we go. It's basically System76 going. Yes, we have contributed a lot of stuff back to the GNOME project. We've improved a lot to, of stuff that the GTK framework currently offers. We've uh, upstreamed about as much as they could 
from what I could tell, which is a lot. That 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 is not a, an insignificant amount of contributions, especially considering, you know, the other operating system. <laughs> it's that's very good. That is the best response that could have come out of it. So good job, System yeah. Seventy Six. <laughs> Pretty interesting to look Absolutely. through, man. Um, but. Yeah, go back and read both the post yourself. Uh, there's a link to it and the show notes if you want to check it out after the fact, because I'm not going to get into the, um, like, th- it serves no purpose to internet slap fights. Like, both projects are doing their own yeah. things. Now everything's cleared yeah. up. Everybody said their piece, so just get out there and make something awesome. <laughs> it's kind of where I'm at with yep. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm not picking teams on this one. <laughs> no. And, you know, System 76 does amazing work for the Linux community, you know, from their contributions to GTK, to REST, to NVIDIA, to open firmware, to core boot, all the way to the Linux kernel itself. And to me, one of the most important contributions System76 has made is that they have grown the Linux community with their awesome software and hardware. So kudos to System76. It's awesome. Fine Corinthian wood grain PCs. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> I, I will Rocky admit, I, I do kind of want a Helio, but I, I don't, yeah. that price want it. That's, no. <laughs> Patrons afraid of quality. I'm afraid of uh, four digits <laughs> when it comes to a PC. That, that's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> so we got some updates for the Pine Phone, and I'm kind of excited about one particular piece of kit. This is a November update, and what we're looking at on the video oh, version is a keyboard for nice. your Pine Phone Pro. Neat, because that, that just straight up gives you a portable Linux machine that you can carry around. Not crazy powerful, but then you get the keyboard and you get the monitor using it as a phone with all the guts built in. Now, there's another thing that I thought Pedro might be very excited about. Uh, <laughs> there is, uh, absolutely, because Pedro, you have the Pine Time. I do. And you picked it up. And they are adding step data tracking for the Pine Time. So you can work on like minimizing the amount of steps that you take from that chair into the kitchen every day. <laughs> Here's the thing. Um, yeah. They already had the step counter on the phone, it. but <laughs> yeah, you couldn't really synchronize it. So what they're... Um, yeah. What they're giving you now is the ability to synchronize it with the third-party apps that you use to sync with your phone or with your laptop. So that that's that's good. And yeah, that keyboard and the Pine Phone Pro. That's that's a really good proposition. In fact, it's so good that the developer devices are, are going to be going out soon, and they had to stop the pre-orders because. They were so popular that everyone was getting one. So, yeah, people very much like what Pine is selling. So, good job, Pine. One of the things good I'm also excited around. about I was showing in the video was the, um, the little module. The, is it rock chip based, I believe, right? Uh, oh, yeah. That's, uh, yes. That'll fit onto the, the Raspberry Pi yeah. compute module. You know, it's a drop in replacement. Ports. And they also have like blade boards that you could put into a rack. Yeah, the blade board is cool. Which is very <laughs> interesting. Uh, the SO quartz. And they wanted to make a thing, you know, when this announcement, like, hey, we released that last month, everyone. And those come in eight gigabyte variants. So you kind of get my attention on that, especially when you have a board with a um, PCIe by one slot. I'm like, hmm. I could. Probably make a very, very interesting uh, portable jackbox with something like that. Oh, absolutely. And an- another thing I'm excited about with the Pine Time, <laughs> me and Pedro love our Pine Times. I've been using mine a lot <laughs> with the step counter, is uh, a feature many people have requested for the Pine Time, which was just released with the version um, 1.7.0 of Infinite Time is now you can set the date and time without having to use the companion app. So that's awesome because a, a lot of people had issues with, with doing that. I, I had no problem doing it, and I know Pedro didn't, but it, it, it there is issues sometimes with the apps communicating with the Pine Time. So it wasn't that was even cool. that. It was just the, like, okay, so you got yourself... A fo- uh, not a phone, but a watch. Yeah. You pull your watch <laughs> out of the brand new packaging, what you got it from, and then you turn it on and it just says zero, zero. Yeah. 
It's yeah. like, okay, do I have a way to change this? No. Oh, you have to synchronize it with Bluetooth with or with, either with your phone <laughs> or with your uh, computer. Um... Okay, I get that this is a smart watch, but this is a pretty dumb smart watch if I can't just yeah, you know, tell the time. It doesn't tell the time. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking too, Pedro. So yeah, no, it, it for I I gave him a pass because you know twenty five dollars that right. these things cost. Yeah. It's, okay, uh, and it's still it's, in development. It synchronizes with the phone. Yeah, it synchronizes with the phone. That's fine. I'm always gonna have my phone on me anyway. So fine, but. Yeah, that that should have been there from the start. I, I want you to roll it back a little bit. I mean, who really has a a, a smartwatch to tell time? <laughs> That's what that one does. I guess everyone uses their phones. Use the pi- the Pine phone instead. Come on, man! Clocks are an invention by the Swiss for people with lazy minds. You keep track of up here, man. But I love the convenience of you know having a an old fashioned watch. Oh. Easy. <laughs> You count them just like <laughs> nanoseconds, but slower. <laughs> Morby's Angel. Oh, this is just, it's its really convenient having, you know, the pine time and, and how inexpensive it was. Wow. <laughs> well, even the pine awesome. phone pro and it's is so not well built. ridiculously expensive by any stretch yeah, of the imagination. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. For the hardware that is in it and that price. particular form yeah. factor. Yeah. That's that's a good price. It's, yeah. it's a bit expensive. It would have been the most expensive phone I ever bought if I ever decide to get one. Mm. But it it's it's a pi- it is a Pinebook Pro in a phone form factor. Right. That's what it is. And you slap the <laughs> keyboard on it and you get a very interesting little device that you can just keep in your yes. pocket. It's a Netbook Pro. Do you think you'll be able to get Colonel 516 RC1 up and running on it, though? It's harm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. <laughs> so, yes, Linux Kernel 5.16 release candidate 1 is out with a very important memory management update, as well as lots more hardware support. Awesome. So 5.16 will introduce Memory Folios, which is a memory management system that aims to allow file systems and the page cache to manage memory in larger chunks than page underscore size. And it has been shown to improve workloads, such as building the Linux kernel, of up to a 10% performance increase. That's a big deal, and that's going to help your system overall in the future. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, yeah, and like I said, there's tons of more hardware support, in the upcoming final release, including mainline support for the Raspberry Pi 4 compute module, more Apple M1 support, RISC-V hypervisor support for KVM, and a whole lot more. Uh, there's just lots of new things coming down the line, and our Linux kernel just keeps getting better and better, and it makes me happy. <laughs> the sheer amount of hardware that it supports out of the box Array for monolithic yeah. kernels. Uh, anyway, the, <laughs> uh, the the big thing about improving the memory management and, uh, yeah, like Joel was saying, it's like up to 10% performance increase just from the memory management alone. If you're dealing with like memory heavy uh, applications like your databases and literally anything else that makes heavy use of paging uh, to memory or literally anywhere on the system it is that's very good because it's not just going to affect that now it's going to create some nice ripples of uh, performance improvements for just about everything because Mm -hmm. everything you do requires you to write into ram so if that kind of performance is even for the smaller like paging oh you open the browser there you go it has created that little thing even if it speeds that up yeah that that that's very nice. <laughs> there is a lot to look forward to. Five sixteen RC one introduces some of the ULSA bits and uh, that um, my buddy Tac yeah. is working on for some Motu devices, some FireWire audio stuff, and I'm very excited to see that. Mainly because there's the slimmest chance of me being able to pull this back and getting everything set up to test it out. But um, currently, I think if you're doing anything like everything in the studio. Was like locked in at five ten because like as soon as you even Pedro found out like 
things start getting squirrely at 514 and after because there's major changes mm-hmm. being done to the audio stack. Now, if you just get like a USB, you know, sound interface, you know, glorified sound card with an excellent, you're going to be fine. But um, dealing with some other stuff that's got some tighter timings, there there still be some dragons. So do keep that in mind, but definitely get out there and play with it. Uh, always good oh. to see. One of the yes, most don't exciting use it in features. <laughs> yeah. One of the most <laughs> exciting things I was so happy when I looked at the uh, Linux kernel blog the, that Linus put out is that there are actually some Motorola 68K updates, which means more support for Linux on my vintage computer hardware, like my Atari computers, Amigas, and some of my Macs. So I was really happy to see <laughs> that they're still contributing to the code for <laughs> M68K. Now that makes Made me, me sit back and wondering, like, what is still in production running Linux using a 68K? Like, well, realistically, it's not for yeah. vintage computers at all. Nobody. Yeah, no, like, I know. Well, you know, the SOC, there's some SOC boards for uh, teaching kids uh, computers. And um, uh, some of them have uh, 68K on them. And uh, yeah, I, I have there's heard there's some There's quite a few hobbyist projects yeah. around the 68K, mm-hmm. including that yeah. one about the semi uh, uh, like post apocalypse and how you can get computing uh, on a 68K device like a Mega Drive or something. Yeah. I think having that kind of support in the kernel is. Interesting? Uh, interesting. I was going to say important, but interesting, I think, is more apt. (laughs) uh, What I'm thinking of, feel free to write into the show. Let us know if you're like, I know the thing, because there's got to be something that is still actively being used in, you know, some type of manner for that support to still be there. Always curious. But, Pedro, you are known for your design choices. and (laughs) (laughs) No, but I did... uh, choose to date a person who is far, far more talented than I'll ever be <laughs> when it comes to the graphical arts. Uh, though she, well, she's bought into that particular uh, platform, which shall not be addressed. Let's just say it costs a lot of money a month. The This one, on the other hand, no, this one mm-hmm. is entirely uh, open source, and it's being developed by the um, Kaleidos open source team which they've already put out uh, quite a few projects. But uh, there's an FAQ. It'll be linked in the uh, in the show notes. And it's PenPod. Hmm. And I, I started going through the GitHub. And it's like, okay, PenPod is the first open source design and prototyping platform meant for cross-domain teams. Non-dependent on operating systems, PenPod is web-based and works with open standards SVG by default. It's like, oh, Okay, is someone finally taking a crack at uh, making Ink- Inkscape with a better or modern UI? Maybe, perhaps, <laughs> or am I dreaming here? Because that that's what it sounds uh-huh. like to me, and I I'm very much on board with that. Because the two times that I've cracked open Inkscape for something, I immediately forget how to do things because it's not. It's your, it's your brain trying to defend itself. Trust me. I know these feels. It's not intuitive <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, Pedro hadn't used a Corel Draw back in the day. <laughs> nope. But, no. Uh, no, but uh, Inkscape is actually very similar to Corel Draw, which I love. Love that about it. Um, but what's really cool is that this is a UX UI web based collaboration tool. So mm-hmm. you can, you know, work with other other uh, people uh, virtually, which is really awesome. And it's platform independent, of course, because it works using the web browser. So and we need more more of these kind of tools that are, you know, uh, distro and uh, uh, system OS ag- agnostic. Really awesome. And this is a really nice tool for visual designers and developers alike. You know, developers like this because they can they can look at the designs that the the artist has made. So, hmm. yeah, really cool. I mean, to Pedro's point, I mean, if you're not accustomed to like dealing around with, I learned vector dealing with vector graphics in the most cruelest way, mm-hmm. and that was dealing with Macromedia Director and later on Flash. 
but yeah, no, once mm -hmm. you start, you have to reset your brain when you open up something like Inkscape or like, like oh, all right, this is how we're going <laughs> to do things again. This is neat <laughs> being something that you can do, you know, and collaborate with this. I mean, you can spool this up on S3 or just roll your own and mm -hmm. it's pretty high quality, man. Um, it's yeah. very well done. It's like everything. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Just interface. looking at the screenshots and looking at the little animations that they have. That's really well done. Very it nice. <laughs> open source and it's free, so you better watch out. Slobs might show up and be like. Uh, oh, oh no. <laughs> you know, I just realized that Penpot kind of reminds me of a combination of Quark Express from back in the day and Corel Draw. It's, it's got a little bit of both in there. <laughs> ah, yes. The bad old times. That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> man. Uh, so I did a thing. Maybe you've heard of it. Uh, speaking of OBS, uh, man, we all saw that. I go down. <laughs> so it was, slobs finally. They just, you, just, you, you always look at situations like this. And you just got too greedy. You did. You did. You, you, you just went too far and they finally just lifted something that started this ball rolling <laughs> or even the OBS team was like, Hey man, Slobs has got a long history. Streamlabs OBS. If you're curious, not affiliated with OBS whatsoever. OBS team way back in the day even went, Hey, don't use our name. And you're like, nah, we're going to do it. Then we're going to try to trademark it uh, because we're Slobs. Mm -hmm. mm. What, what uh, site did they lift wholesale Pedro? Uh, it was, Oh God, I mentioned it earlier and I Negative. can't remember. That's why I asked the you. <laughs> <laughs> oh and, it and slobs the, for every everyone out there is stream labs obs <laughs> yeah uh, let's see i <laughs> found it earlier let me err. So there was this other site and <laughs> slobs is like in one of their pages they were working on just like copy pasted and changed out some graphics and uh they finally got called on it which has led to this ball of by e everyone yeah even El Gato <laughs> showed up and you're like yeah uh, yeah they do that they named their uh mobile app uh stream uh what was it stream deck <laughs> smooth smooth and uh that's that's uh light stream light they stream. lifted basically the entire uh gui from light stream for their new console um offering mm -hmm. effectively and light stream <laughs> started by it's like hey can i copy your homework immediately calling them out on it and then everyone else including people partnered with uh stream labs went you better start explaining and they have not had a very good explanation. They're going to have to do some radio silence <laughs> on that because Slob just entered into partnership with, um, recently with Twitch and somebody mm -hmm. at Logitech is going, really? Whose idea was it to buy these Yahoo's last year? Um, <laughs> what, what went down? This is not going to be pretty, but back to the origin of this. You probably want to use OBS. Maybe you're new to Linux and you want to find out how does this work? Because this is going to be different. Either that or what you can do is you can just install Linux, try to set everything up yourself without doing any research, fail horribly, possibly make a YouTube video about it, um, ex explaining like, like I should have been able to figure this out. Window splaining, literally window splaining Linux to <laughs> <Wind people. laughs> This is our thing now. Yeah. We're going to have a shirt this time next week. Wind splaining. Um, <laughs> about how you've done no research and, you know, your years and years and years of clicking on ne next buttons very accurately had prepared you to tackle an entirely different operating system. <laughs> it's a shock. It didn't. So I'm trying to help you out trying to help you out mm -hmm. i've created a first time setup for obs linux and i'm i was talking in discord earlier um this month and last month like how far back do i pull and i i went all the way back like okay we're going to start out with an audio interface a web camera and a microphone and get your audio level set up get your web suit look we just installed the webcam drivers welcome to linux guys um <laughs> speaking of logitech and just some basic <laughs> stuff up to and, uh, you know, setting up Pavu control because you're going to be dealing with that. Um, Pipewire still got some work to be done and you're really only going to be running that in certain installations, where to get OBS, how to get it installed, how out of luck you are if you have a Chromebook. You're welcome, OBS <laughs> dev team. And um, <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> how to do all this, you know, what's your output settings, how to set up your audio the way I set up my audio, which I'm trying to teach you good habits 
and I'm going to walk you through setting up your first basic scene, adding audio to that scene, setting up your webcam, and how to capture a game. So, you know, just some basic tip. Look at that. Oh, look at that. I look <laughs> Canadian. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Was that uh, too much Jordan and Sandy for two weeks in a row? <laughs> Could have been, man. Could have been. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, at least we don't, at least our Canadians are malfunctioning. So I'm not in danger of apologizing anytime soon. Um, and yeah, of course, uh, capturing a Vulcan game and uh, setting up alerts and all, all the fun stuff. Look at our beautiful party patrons. There they are. And uh, yeah, go check it out. It's there. That's one of the things uh, I've been doing for 10 years, man. Just why I, I face palm so hard. And I always have a very strong opinion when somebody comes out and it's like, Linux doesn't work. I'm like you didn't even, what are you talking about? Try. Audio doesn't work on Linux. Yeah, even <laughs> even old audio interfaces that aren't made for Windows <laughs> or, or work on Win or Mac uh, work on Linux. So mm -hmm. it's a thing. And Ven is proving that to the world. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things that uh, Ven brought up in the video, which uh, rightly so, and calling out everyone else who's done the video like that before, it's like, oh yeah, and what volume level should I be targeting? Should I be setting mm, to actually yeah. be able to, you know, have people listen to me and then you adjust the game based on what you or how loud you sound? Uh, that is the big one because, and yes, Ven does address that and he says, try to target this. There you go. Go watch the video. It is very nice. Uh, and no one up to this point has done that. Why? Why? <laughs> Cause <laughs> you, you smash that button fam. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you'd think like that is one of the core things. Is why why <laughs> I'm not leaving this planet until I get you set up with proper EQ. <laughs> Fine, I'll install our door and we'll go through it on Saturday. There, there's nothing to go through. <laughs> you don't need it for these streams. I got you working back here, baby. You need it for your yes, streams. For my I, streams. I, I, I'm I, trying I to help you. Pedro <laughs> self improvement with this kid is. <laughs> I learned the hard way. <laughs> oh. It is a fight. Uh, but yeah, you saw all the beautiful patrons uh, rolling through in the credits. That's where I threw them in. I'm like, hey, these people are helping out. If you want to become one of them, head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We got some tiers, rewards, and a bunch of cool stuff. It's thrown your way if you can help us out. If not, that's cool. Come hang out with us. We got IRC that's always live. Um, Like, subscribe, share the show, and all that fun stuff. But if you're a patron, we do have a Discord that uh, we hang out the other six days a week. It is way more active than most discords that I join, which I always found odd an eclectic group of misfits. There's uh we even have windows <laughs> users that come hang out with us. So don't worry about like, Oh, you're going to be mean. No, no, not at all. Mm -mm. Not at no. all. And uh, we got a bonus show that we do as a thank you to anybody um, who's going to make that commitment to uh, the pre pre super shows. And that it's kind of like our, slice of life community you know what we're watching what's going on behind the scenes stuff that go on here and i always put out early access to videos like the obs video like hey everyone take a look at this let me know what you think do you have any additional questions then we'll push it out and we have an uncut series if you like this you're like this is pretty good background music maybe you want it in podcast form you get a customer rss feed with patron where we uh throw up the podcast live and uncut series but Jill, I remembered to say we have some people to thank this week. Yeah, <laughs> you did. <laughs> so we have a new patron, Beastwick. Yay. Thanks, Thank Switch. you, Beastwick. <laughs> We've been <laughs> enjoying having you in chat. And, uh, and Foxdog uh, sent us a game. He sent me a game. He inflicted me. Um, Fox awesome. likes to do that. It's like <laughs> I, I was playing around with the DLSS stuff as I was mentioning at the beginning of the show, and he's like, uh, "I know another game that's got this. Play the Cyber Truck or whatever it's called. I, um, the, you know, <laughs> the one where like Keanu Reeves oh, is yeah, Optimus the, Prime or something. I, I forget that Cyber that Truck game exists. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like oh, the new buggy one, right? Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> so um, maybe maybe I'll be testing some of that out. But thank you very much." Um, for helping us out and um but yeah beastwick was uh trying to get the 
Because if you sub to us on Twitch, it'll pop you into our super secret Discord where we're all hanging out. And that was just not working for some reason. It so um, Peacewick <laughs> was like flip table. It's like, yeah, Patreon <laughs> boom, synced right in. So that's pretty nice. neat. Uh, <laughs> if you want to, this is a horrible idea, but we always do it for fun. We got a little Amazon wish list. If you want to pick up for something, uh, here we can take a look at. Clearly, this is Pedro's. Um, <laughs> yes. Or penguins. <laughs> Hello, Stuff my name penguins. is Jill Bryant. <laughs> ooh, ooh, look at that light up one. I like the light up one. This one on top. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's got LEDs in it. Yep. I yeah. <laughs> torch that thing so quick. Um, <laughs> hey, look. Ooh, uh, SSD. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. And it's gone bucks. up in price. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I bought those when they were like $19. Yeah. yeah $20 I, for 240 gig. Those were nice. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I grabbed a bunch of them because I use them in my old machines. They're perfect. Uh, both so of the boxes that you guys are on down here have those. I'm like, what? $20? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Why not? They're getting SSDs. Get an upgrade. Pedro's got one because he really wants to know about yeah. Aragon. And his eyes. Oh, Ragnar, cool. the accordion. Uh, <laughs> that that sounds fun. Uh, yeah, memory mine cards. is just. Neat, uh, mine is actually sorted by price, so that, that should thing. help you. You can help. <laughs> you can help shave Pedro. <laughs> A hair trimmer. Yeah. You can. You yes. Can. What is this? Steel tubular. Oh, you're still doing the lockpick thing. All right. All right. Yes. Uh, I have gotten to the point where the those three test locks that I got, I can open them very, very quickly now. Uh, so yeah, I need to get cause more. one of his computers to spring a leak. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> See, you can just, there is nothing give like me a water patient hazard. <laughs> destruction. Arthur knows these feels. Arthur like, Hey man, yeah. I, I, he, he's increased the chance of a uh, Jackbox uh, higher than non-zero that during a show it will spring a leak and torch itself live. So, Yes. <laughs> well done. If you're wondering about this wall back here, this is our wall of fine upstanding cannibals. People have helped out because we are a small, little, tiny operation, and they picked up things for the studio. That's how you uh, win that blame game. There's also like a wish zone. This is stuff I don't use it correctly. It's stuff we're going to be buying for the studio. If you want to help out with that, you get your name back here. Warning: It is expensive. <laughs> it is not. Uh, I don't know what to do. Do anything cheap on here. Sometimes I do. If you catch me on a good day, because I put stuff, like wires <laughs> and stuff, and then end up buying it. Uh, no. My SSDs are way more expensive. Like, yeah, yeah. No, those SSDs are real price. Yeah. yeah. 379 <laughs> All this is like work stuff. Uh, the, the, the switch. Oh, look, it's the Bayonetta machine. That's, that's the joke <laughs> thing, but fortunately it's been out, so I, I have not had a Switch show up at the house. Okay, this is what we were talking about in the pre-show. This is how ridiculous the market is right now. It's insane. Wow. $868 for the... This is why you're getting a 2060 with 12 gigs, because I was telling Pedro, $868 when the A4000, the new, not last gen, mm -hmm. the current gen, Quadro, is 1600 Because once you're at like that close to 1000 you're like, whatever. Yeah. You're already spending them near four digits, so right that as well. Yeah, just uh, a little hang higher. On. <laughs> hang on, as I got, I got, I got to go hit F2, then I got to hit the marker button because Pedro is a big cussy mouth. Um, <laughs> yeah, you oh, did. I used the yeah, D word, you did. not that one. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <that's it. laughs> I keep forgetting that that word is frowned upon yeah. because seriously, heretic, monster. Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh thanks everybody um for empowering us and giving us the yeah. uh, all the stuff needed to do this all right oh we get a store too store.linuxteamcast.com cover yourself some yes. merch i got stickers and things see i buy my own goods you can cover up naughty words with slightly less <laughs> naughty ones <laughs> now ladies and gentlemen <laughs> boys and girls it is the moment you've been waiting for the time for a slice a pie. Life short. Mm, Texas pie. Ooh, a cherry pie. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, the that's Texas definitely pie. cherry. That, 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 that could be like, um, <laughs> I I, wow, well, I don't know. I don't the know. The only thing I can think of is not appropriate. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yes. 
speaking of which, we have a new version of the Raspberry Pi OS. And it has lots of major changes. And it is now based on Debian 11 Bullseye, our favorite horse from Toy Story. Yay! Run like the wind, Bullseye! <laughs> yeah, yeah! I love, I love Toy Story. So anyways, uh, the desktop and applications have switched to the GTK Plus 3 User Interface Toolkit. That's huge, which will create a cleaner look and feel throughout the OS. And another major change is that the Raspberry Pi OS has a new compositing window manager, Mutter, which replaces the open box window manager from previous Whoops. releases. There we go. Hello. Hi. <laughs> and <laughs> hi, hi, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the Mutter will allow you to have more window effects, such as animations and and shading, um, which are now possible, as well as being Wayland compatible for the future. Yeah, that's right, folks. You never never thought that your Raspberry Pi would run, run Wayland, but it will probably pretty soon. And But because Mutter uses more system resources, if you don't have a Pi with at least two gigs, um, two gigabytes or more of RAM, the older open box window manager will still be used. And gosh, there's some other major changes. One, there is a new notification manager in the taskbar, like other Linux OSs, and oh, a that new thing update that I always plugin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same here. <laughs> same here, Pedro. <laughs> and there's also a new update plugin that utilizes the new notification system, which provides a graphical way to install updates without needing to use a terminal window. Now now, that is very cool and convenient, but this is a Raspberry Pi, and I really want pe people to learn Terminal on the Raspberry Pi. <laughs> so, but but an awesome update, nonetheless. No, but Jill, you <laughs> monster. What is your problem? <laughs> I, I've had a very large YouTube channel tell me that average people are incapable of using terminals. Oh. <laughs> it's well, only for power users. To... Like, good to know you're not a power user then. <laughs> oh. Well, tell that to all the kids out there who are using Raspberry Pi for aw aw awesome teach, projects. You're teaching them bad learning. habits, Jill. Yeah. It, and it yeah. is a teaching tool. Yes, absolutely. Give yes. pies to your kids, <laughs> both kinds, and uh, teach them how to use the terminal, how to set up their own GUI. It It's a teaching aid and a really good one at that and not terribly expensive. So, yes. I, I do never, uh, like, I really don't. I mean, th okay, this is a new release of um, Debian 11 on Pi. There's uh, going to be some dragons. I, I've already run into this. I've seen this. Mm. And when I say that, I've seen it from a distance because I'm like, I'm not that dumb. I'm not installing that <laughs> on anything. Um, let me, look, projects I fall. They've changed around some stuff with uh, LibCamera. Well, this is a good thing. Uh, it, it's caused a few projects just completely have to rework things. They've changed that with the GPI open, the outputs and stuff like this. Because I'm kind of on this because I'm getting ready to do a Raspberry Pi video about setting up the cameras and a, a whole completely different thing. I'm like, whoa, mm -hmm. that that threw a Molotov and that, I'm like, okay, that's got to get sorted out. So keep stuff like that in mind. Now, jokes aside, with the command line stuff, or I, I fully understand, I fully understand. I have in the back, like in this rack, out on a shelf, there is a Raspberry Pi 4, 8 gig living its best life. <laughs> but I never thought about installing a desktop on it in, in my brain. Needs, <laughs> and I know perfectly well, I do. That is more than capable of running light desktop duty and stuff like that. Right. Not just light desktop. It also mm -hmm. does very good. If say you have a gaming device that runs a Yay. raspberry four with four gigs of Ram. And yes, it plays games all the way up to the PSP without PSP, Nintendo 64, without even batting an eye. Uh, it's uh, it it's a very good um, like entry level device because there's a lot of documentation out for it, and it does teach you a great deal many things about how you can get started on both the software and the hardware side because hacking is very much encouraged. Uh, how to get started with computing. Though, to the point of a GTK3 and Mutter, it's like, okay, yeah, the CPU and the GPU on the Pi 4, pretty good. But they're not exactly massive powerhouses. Well, you gotta <laughs> start. We're... You gotta start somewhere. I've said this before in the show when the first Pi came out. It was the, the 
Planet of the Apes, we're all around it, playing with it, trying to get and we finally got X to like chug its way through. That was last time. We're like, it did it. Because we, we we're looking at the future. You know, I'm not concerned about what's going on with the quad core Pi eight gig right now. I like the next one. But the next one's gonna mm-hmm. be because mm-hmm. I, I firmly believe, you know, just uh XKCD extrapolating. Um, of course the next one's gonna be so much more powerful. Um we're gonna have like legitimate desktop replacements because the Pi four, as powerful as this, it's not as powerful as a Dell 30, 10, a 10 year old or 12, 13 year old <laughs> Optiplex. Like these are butter robot <laughs> machines that run these two boxes. They have just enough power to get into Debian. They're running Debian 11, ironically enough. Uh, <laughs> launch a web browser and run an audio, uh, IP audio system in the background to connect to this box over here. That's it. I can't quite pull that off just yet. Not quite. But I think the next one will. So these would be going by the uh, awesome. Not even the audio bits? Because, okay, the video, it's it's got to run through a it's browser. The web it's RTC, then it's dealing with yeah. the overhead of having the um, <laughs> capture card plugged into it because that's going to be coming in over the right, yeah. right, right, right. And it's right. got to keep all that. Now, the Pi 4 is a step in the right direction because it's got dedicated Ethernet, which mm-hmm. it, there's like time because there's fiber optics connecting these things too. Um, reasons, stuffs, but I have. I have, I'm forward vision. And so the more desktop stuff and to my point, Pedro is like, they, they got to start working on it now. You don't want to wait until it. Yeah. But open box, <laughs> open box and LXD are really good because they give you a yeah. desktop recognizable as a desktop. Did you see the tiling With windows minimal, manager for iOS? Think... No. Mm. I saw a screenshot, What's but not called? a video. <laughs> 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 also, um, I mean, eh, I guess See, I post if the stuff even Windows the is doing, and <laughs> <laughs> I guess if even Windows is doing like some sort of automatic window tiling, then I guess Apple wouldn't want to get left behind. I <laughs> come on, man. How about this? There it is. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Manifest. I don't know. I just thought I'd bring that up. I thought it was kind of unexpected. <laughs> Listen. I, I, I'm pretty sure that constitutes heresy in uh, Apple land, but okay. <laughs> after, after I fought off the initial reaction of what? It's like, oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. I understand. Listen, man, our brothers and sisters in iOS land, um, they, they, they need some tiling in their lives too. If you two are yeah. a captive Apple user, that that there is help you can That's find what I'm out there. Maybe you're stuck in a work Mac and you're like, oh, I can only watch this thing whoosh in and out one more time. <laughs> can I feed it through the shredder? No? no. Okay. <laughs> so, one thing we promise not to do is uh, feed any of your feedback through our shredder, but we can't promise anything <laughs> on the side of the spam golem it might get you. Mm-hmm. The spam golem is very much doing its job but if you'd like to test your luck and uh, your test might your against might. our particular golem yes uh you can go to linkscapecast.com you hit the contact button it will present you with a page that has some caveats at the top and a form that you gotta fill in at the bottom just pick lwdw to send a message over uh, this way and we shall yeah we shall address it unless we can find the answer on the first page of google <laughs> that's your one <laughs> caveat right there. Well, I mean, yeah. Just save some time, man. Like, uh, don't, don't, don't try to like slide in, you know, through a side channel attack, but like, Hey, I'd like to just have a come, come have a conversation. Don't, don't like that. Oh yeah. yeah. The IRC is free. We're, uh, we're monitoring it's linked. It's bridged to we, Discord we have and to Twitch chat. technology courtesy of, um, Strider and MD. We our IRC, yep. our discord and, uh, Twitch are all, linked together in real time in chat so so it's uh linux gamecast pound linux gamecast on libera no chat pound linux Just game join game. us there or no you know pound. <laughs> <laughs> we don't judge you I mean, we do, but terror we do it and violence quit pounding things <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, we did actually get a bit of a um, reply after last week's uh, very inflammatory episode, I suppose. Uh, Kenji is like, Gnome's, uh, he's addressing about the Gnome System 76 Hit piece. bit. 
Yes. Uh, and mm. it's like the LVS and FWUPD quote unquote drama that the post, the gnome post tries to conjure misses one critical piece. After System 76 made their concerns known, these concerns have been addressed by the project and they have a good working relationship now with it. Uh, it is not that they made their concerns known, which would have been fine, uh, and used it regardless of these concerns. After all, do we not all use some things we think could be better? Uh, but uh, he says, I don't want to trigger the old golem, the spam golem, uh, but this can be <laughs> verified on Twitter. Much love, Kenji. And yeah, it, that is, see, that that wouldn't allow that particular gnome developer to make the points that he did in such a whiny little post that wasn't meant to be reasonable clearly <laughs> that was meant to be as one-sided as possible and to make gnome in his eyes look better than system 76 which didn't work like that well at the end of the day i mean when you're dealing with an open source project uh it's a collection of people and you can have um everybody's got different opinions like one on one way i respect the gnome project for that level of freedom for the people who work on it like hey mm -hmm. i i want to sit with mm -hmm. some gnomes like all right that's uh, go for it um, don't put it on the official blog maybe just yeah, yeah by all means go to your own personal blog post it there have no repercussions because you're voicing your opinion as you should be able to just don't put it on the official blog just Maybe work on like staying classy. Um, <laughs> Maybe put it on Reddit instead. <laughs> well, yeah, go on Reddit okay. like yeah. everyone else. <laughs> I mean, or just do what I do. When you see internet drama, just sidestep and just keep going. Like, nope. Yeah. Uh -uh. <laughs> I got better stuff to do in my life. Well, everyone. I like that initial impact. I do. The, like the initial impact of the internet drama is like, you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I, 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 <laughs> I, Pedro I, likes the drama llama. <laughs> just the initial bit because I don't stick around after yeah. everyone's done talking and they kiss and make out, make up, whatever. Yeah. I have uh, for it because I don't do the outrage on the internet when I see something like that. I'm like, geez, okay, fine. This is going to take half a day to do proper <laughs> research to find out what the real thing is going on here because no, everyone always presents know, their I'm side of the best I'm just watching the soap case. opera. I don't care. Yeah, exactly. You're part of the problem. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful people. We got to bounce out of here. We're going to roll some credits. Uh, stick around. Look for your name in them. There. Aww. There. I'm going to bring us some music. Look at that. Cool. And I got a credits button watch. Boop. Here it comes. Thank you, Cinema Me Metro, for the follow, as well as uh, Dream Traveling. Ooh, I love that username. Dream Traveling. That's nice. <laughs> oh, I, I see what's going on there. List of dreams. <laughs> Steve Husband says, great so. <laughs> he meant show. <laughs> no, no, that says great sow. That's, it's, sow. It, it is it a does. mighty pig. Yes. <laughs> and Mir's posting uh, awesome uh, drama llama <laughs> pigs for Pedro. <laughs> oh, that was funny. <laughs> I, I, I do oh, like me, like patrons. that initial hit of drama. Yeah. I do. And then I'm done with it. It's like, oh, and I'm then out. you're like, no, I'm out. <laughs> Y'all deal with it. That's <laughs> a little different because the only joy I get is I watching these avoided. things chatter around. I'm like, yeah, all right, I'm bored with it. Next. Yeah. We'll see you next week. <laughs> next. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs> and see. All right. <laughs> what do I think? I think uh, usually the people who exhibit the highest oh, signs sight. of paranoia are usually the most boring people that have nothing I'd be interested in spying on. Part mm -hmm. two, you minus nine. Because <laughs> the ones who actually have something to hide are hiding it all the time. <laughs> Well, I mean, this is like, uh, you know, I, I appreciate security private um, uh, hobby, obvious, you know, and I am down with that. Like, educate yourself. Everyone on the internet is one of those nowadays. 
Well, uh, there's some basic things you want to do, you know, you like SSL and all that and have, you know, don't have a ton of trackers, maybe run a pie hole or um, some type of ad blocking, tracker blocking. Pie hole like, is away. very, very useful. Yeah. <laughs> but no, no one wants <laughs> to hear your list of things. Like, man, you know what? If I really need it, I'm just going to go in your house, put a key logger dongle on the back of your box mm. that you haven't checked when the last time you looked which keyboard plugged in. Hmm? Think about it. And most likely, you as a common mortal uh, are not being targeted for your stuff unless you've pissed off the wrong people. But that's on you. <laughs> uh, they. Uh, well, something we've talked about. They're usually times. trying to use you to get into a say, sufficiently who you funded for. bad actor is going to get whatever they want. Either that, or they're going to show up with a wrench. Yes. <laughs> Five dollar wrench. Right. Still wins. <laughs> so I'm not saying be irresponsible. <laughs> Take appropriate measures, but yeah, I, I don't mm-hmm. get the whole like um, <sighs> what I'm saying, like half jokingly. You got to listen to you know, take everything I say with a bit of humor because I do want to cause people to laugh on occasion. Is like the camera slides, like I get it, but I also know me. If I was walking by and somebody's like, "Oh, people are spying on you right now," I'd I'd, I'd start dancing for you. I'd wave. I, I, I'd try to scar you <laughs> that, a little That's bit. just straight up. Just, Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Would I use it? No. <laughs> then again, I mean, this is like, I, we all carry around. Um, like, I understand the utility of it, right? Like having a physical cutoff switch mm-hmm. for a camera. And it saves battery. It, if it is actually yeah. like cutting current to the thing, it's like, oh, turn off everything you're not using. All of a sudden, you have a lot more battery. It's like, it's, yeah. Mm-hmm. Please? (laughs) And if you want to be scared about the level of surveillance that's currently happening, go read the stuff that Edward Snowden leaked, however, 10 years ago? Hmm. Probably. (laughs) Seriously, go read through it. It's insane. It, it, that, it. Yeah, learn about the cutting edge of what they were doing 20 years ago. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> they were doing that stuff before anyone knew about it and some of that stuff is so egregious so bad that yeah the, the levels of paranoia that you see on the internet they're a walk in the park comparatively speaking well, this is also the other thing <laughs> I mean you need a healthy healthy amount of paranoia that's built into us like I understand like- that anything yeah <laughs> it's just don't 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 like cycle into it too hard man i mean don't let it drive everything you do by all means be aware of it but don't let it be your single motivational thing for you know i was going to use an example but um mm-hmm. i kind of don't want to give that person any more publicity So let's just say that there's a lot of people that even though they are very much aware of what's going on and they have been calling things for what they are, and then they've done some really nasty things that... But let's roll this back to Linux, Pedro. (laughs) This is my argument (laughs) for running Linux. It's like, one thing I'm not going to do is run a complete black box operating system. Even if I you do don't care about on. the security thing, it's just the being able to actually fix things yourself. Yeah. Next, next button, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> None. Oh, I downloaded this Microsoft uh. tool. I clicked the next button three times and it fixed my issue. No. I'm a power user. Windows, <laughs> Windows, Windows will repair it. It's got a thing that fixes itself. You peasant. <laughs> you terminal using hacker. <laughs> Get good scrub. <laughs> That's the thing. I've actually been trying to uh, use the GUI on Linux, part of me sticking with KDE for as long as it did, outside of KWIN, which is also the worst thing about KDE, but hey, um, is actually trying to use the GUI for everything. And to their credit, KDE gives you that. Mm-hmm. You can yeah. absolutely do most everything. If you're just using your, say you just want to play games, you can do it all by the GUI. Yeah. But the problem is, is something goes wrong. 
problem if something goes wrong, you can do the Windows thing. <laughs> Clean wipe and reinstall. There, done. That, <laughs> that is the worst habit to have. I mean, you will... You need to have a reason to want to use Linux. Like it's, it, it is not a... Words. Yeah, it's for <laughs> the piece of people people want to experiment who want to tinker no it's for curious. people who have a reason to run linux i mean like yeah. I, I, I would never make the argument of like no no mac ios android windows that is that has been filed down for the least common denominator that's their goal mm-hmm Linux is an amalgam. It's the Akira of operating <laughs> systems, man. It will eat you. <laughs> <laughs> and trying to, like, all efforts right now are just like putting a little paper mask over the Akira monster. <laughs> Go, no, it's mm-hmm. fine. See, look. <laughs> and one of the things that gets brought up a lot is like, oh, but backwards compatibility is so much better on Windows. It is. It's- uh, okay, I will give it that. No. However, <laughs> infinitely. However, <laughs> Pedro. However, I, let me give you a game from five years ago. Yes, a Linux native game from five years ago probably will not work on Thank current you. Linux. However, if you grab a Windows game from twenty years ago, it will not work on Windows ten, and it will most likely work exactly. on Linux. So, yeah. out of the box, walk me through how this <laughs> math thing works. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like for the native stuff yes the constant abi changes and the constant api changes that linux has undergone and now we're gonna have to go through again with wayland they have caused a lot of disruption oh yeah a little bit uh that's kind of inevitable mm-hmm. but when it comes to anything that's abstracted like proton like wine all of that stuff that doesn't work on the current versions of Windows works on Linux. <laughs> and yes, FireWire audio devices, like old hardware. <laughs> <laughs> old hardware, you plug it in, unless it's a next window touchscreen. <laughs> well, the beautiful that thing Windows. about it, Pedro, is... is <laughs> The thing is, is it's old in the fact that you can still buy the same device for $500 more, but it has a Thunderbolt plug on it now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, um, yeah, USB typically is going to work out of the box. You don't have to worry about a lot of stuff. That was one of the things I wanted to show off because this is something you don't realize that I have to sit back and really genuinely think about because it doesn't. we don't think about it is yeah. coming from, oh, I just got a focus right. Okay, somebody with an audio interface on the Linux, they, not on Linux, but on Windows, or even, mm, actually Mac's not a problem, on Windows, is uh, they know the right way to do is I go to Focusrite's website and I download my drivers. Mm, download the drivers. It would, mm-hmm. you know, like, well, I plugged it in. Where do I, I what, do I got to download something? What's a GitHub? And like, no, 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 you're good. You, you plug just it in. plug it in. That's where it ends. You plug it in and you start yeah. using it. <laughs> you the remember that? Plug and play um, OS in the world. <laughs> the, that old comic, that's just a, uh, it's like buy a Windows laptop, reinstall a clean version of Windows without any of the bloatware, start working. Uh, buy an Apple laptop, buy more RAM and install it on the laptop, start working. Buy a Linux yeah. laptop. Start working. No, no, Trim no, neckbeard. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, I could buy it, and it could come with, like, Ubuntu or Pop! OS, and I'd have to uninstall it, get rid of the bloatware, and put Debian on it. <laughs> or you could just go to a Linux computer seller that gives you Debian pre-installed. It, it wouldn't feel Pedro the same. Air. It wouldn't feel the same, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Tuxedo. I think Tuxedo do as well. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, there's, like, multiple things, like, um, like, like, stuff that's out in left field, like setting up a IP audio system like I have here. Jack exists on Windows. Jack exists on, um, Mac, but nobody wants to tango with it. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> you have to use the command line. <laughs> 
Fortunately, Pipewire is going to nerf that. That's, this is the promise of Pipewire audio stack is nerfing it to the point. that That's how you know you've got it once the Windows kids can figure out. Yeah. And the, <laughs> the audio and also the video stuff because right now, um, be it on Windows, on Mac, uh, or on Linux, if you have a webcam being used for, say, WebRTC, mm -hmm. you can't use it for anything else. Right. It, that's it. You only exactly. have the one application, it's directly tied mm. to that feed, and you're not getting anything else. Pipewire is going to change that. There's going to be an uh, abstraction layer, and you can effectively point as many applications at that one stream as you want, as your processor will allow, effectively. That's crazy! So that's like a bunch I'm of... I'm so looking forward to that. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> one of my things I'm looking forward to most in the future. This, this, is, this is why I'm Venstone. That's why I just mirror it out to a virtual device and keep making as many as I need. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that <laughs> virtual used cam. to require uh, 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 using the command line until OBS decided, ah, let's just make that I a hear there's a pretty there good go. video on how to get that set up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and if you look at your old video before that, there was a lot of command line for that too. <laughs> yeah. Easy way to do it. <laughs> if you don't want the overhead of OBS. Which is not that much. <laughs> yeah, it's... It's not insignificant. It's not. Yeah. If you're on an older or lower end system, yes, you will notice it. But even your typical laptop quad core... Eight thread CPU. My guess, I'm a fan of command lines, Pedro. Like all this yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. People who enjoy the command line are very few and far between. People who will use it because it is convenient. Scriptable. Um, yes. <laughs> very convenient. And it, once you do know the syntax, it is very, very powerful. Um, I realize that. Well, that's why I use it. Um, but I, if I can... I'd rather use the GUI. And there are a lot of people who, like Linus Sebastian, uh, don't like the command line at all. We're going to meet in a happy middle. What you have is <laughs> Windows implementing Linux and PowerShell and all that. And, and and on Linux, we have projects you know like Pop and Gnome and people like that trying to make it more clicky. Next, there, There's going to be a happy middle that yes. no one's going to be happy with. So look forward to it. Mm. <laughs> That's what a compromise is. Half work. We don't have to compromise. We can have everything. That's the thing. Yeah. We can absolutely have everything. But then you have those people. It's like, oh, my fragmentation. And there's oh, God. a hundred different ways to do the same thing. How is that a bad thing? That's because they need it to That's work like source. what they're used to. <laughs> It's like you don't like the way that one thing does it. Go find another. It's great. It's amazing. Now, the reality of the problem is, <laughs> is when you find yourself trying to teach other people how to do something. Not everyone's going to like the way you do it. That's all you have to be aware. <laughs> and as somebody instructing people how to do things, Pedro, incorrect. <laughs> I mean, if you are just doing a tutorial, like, to the point, like, internet video tutorials, then yes, people are just going to follow whatever you say. They are, Sometimes. but if you do, <laughs> let's say, okay, this is how you get your audio set up using GNOME. Because GNOME's got it very convenient and, like, well thought out, like, audio set up, but I don't know if you're running GNOME or not. I can't do that. can do it with KDE. Mm -hmm. So you tell people what you use, and no, what you do is if they do don't like what you use, you go have. somewhere else. This is why Pedro doesn't make guides. <laughs> yes. yeah. with, with my my students, I have them um, when they're learning Linux use uh, three different. Dis they can they have their choice of three different distros, and then I've write wrote tutorials for each one, and uh, but tell them to use the default window managers like like. Uh, Use Ubuntu Studio with XFCE, um, uh, Pop OS, and um, so I have little tutorials for each distro to, 
to, you know, kind of little get started tutorials and, and how to download their software and just use the interface. And this yeah, is like one I'm of the not things a teacher. you run into <laughs> is everybody, you know, does Katie have its equivalent of like the GNOME software center? I'm sure it does. Oh, yeah. Uh, Discover. <laughs> yes, Discover. Discover is actually better than GNOME software in a lot of ways. It's a heck of a lot faster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the latest release of GNOME 41 is awesome. The software center is so much better. They really refined it, made it cleaner. It's so much faster. Um, it uh, does really it nice still and... throw a little fit when you try to install a loose dev file that it forgets that it you said oh. you opened a deb file and it just shows you the intro page it's like where's the deb yeah. file i double clicked on yeah no i haven't okay tested time to that install g debbie again <laughs> yeah g debbie always have that but um this is a uh, in fedora i was testing because they're the first distro to come with fedora uh, gnome 41 out of the box and uh yeah it was running really smooth i was really impressed much better. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, to to Van's point, I I am not a teacher. If you're asking me for help to do something, I'm going to help you do it. You don't like the way I do it? <laughs> I mean, we're on the internet. You can go find a way that you like to do it, or someone who's not going to hurt <laughs> your feelings while doing it. Yeah. Not apologizing. Oh, <laughs> it's okay, Pedro. Yeah, you just you have to have tons of patience. That's number one. Just have patience. <laughs> oh no, I have the patience. I am going to <laughs> explain my reasoning and my Reason. way of doing things. Yeah. A, a, as many times as you like me to, I will guide you through my way of doing things because that's how I do it. That's how it's been working for me. And if again, if you don't like it, go find someone else that does things the way you like them. It's not fragmentation, yeah. <laughs> it's choice. It's choice, yeah. God. <laughs> yeah, I know. I heard. <laughs> it's like, can we stop using that word and brandishing it around like I it's a it. bad thing? I hate it. I hate it. It's choice. It's, uh, um, yeah, fragmentation, so-called fragmentation is experimentation, and experimentation leads to choice, <laughs> like we talked about last week. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have someone with millions of subscribers on YouTube and uh, rehashing the same stupid arguments that over the past 20 years have been debunked over and over and over and over. Yeah. And he's just brandishing them like a feather duster. It's like, you better stop know, waving that thing around or you're going to poke your eye out. <laughs> what are we talking about pulling pins for? <laughs> we're, we're talking about it's the horrors grenade. of you can the word choose to fragmentation pull the pin or not. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Apple's all over Metro. the place with its styling window managers. I mean, <laughs> yeah, Cinemetro, it's true. The software center is, I found with Fedora um, 35, although I was using it with 32 gigs of, of RAM, which does make a difference, it actually um, it was slow when I first initially. It, it, initiated the software center but after that it became quicker you want to see the gnome software center <laughs> being extra slow use it in ubuntu oh I'm yeah not yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah you just need a faster computer bro <laughs> <laughs> oh you can have a 16 core 32 thread 5950x that first launch is gonna take you thirty seconds. It's always slow. At least. Yeah, it's always slow on Ubuntu. It's always always has been. I, I, I'll wait until I see some benchmarks. <laughs> it's a snap. I'm looking for it. Yeah. It's a snap. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to you know if. if System76 does release a, a GNOME version before they work on their own, which I think they probably will, to see how, how much improved the their software center will be, too. That'll be good. It, it hurts. That, that's, I don't think we've got to worry about that, Scott. Um, uh, <laughs> oh, if you mean the Intel um, claims uh, that some reviewers were putting out, it's like, oh, I overclocked mine to 8 gigahertz. No, you didn't. <laughs> I mean, you could, you could theoretically hit that. Once. Um, 
Um, yes, at a very, very low temperature. <laughs> and maybe you wiggle the mouse without it immediately crashing. <laughs> I don't know. Oh uh, yeah, you should see some of the claims of the Alder Lake uh, overclocks. I don't need any claims. Because they work. Show me a video <laughs> with empirical evidence and I will be like, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is, this is save you a lot of time, kids. Don't buy anything that anybody can't back up. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of that on the internet. Too. There is. <laughs> and anytime you, Anytime somebody starts off a reply or a retort with, I remember reading somewhere right there, that that's code for enjoy my fanfic that I'm about to write. <laughs> oh, then you shouldn't be buying um, any Apple devices, any Sony devices. What are you any... about? iCloud. <laughs> There's one thing I will give Apple. Don't buy anything that you can't back up. I mean, it's not your device. It's Apple's device. It's Sony's device. It's Microsoft's device if yeah. you install Windows See, on you're it. you're not even buying it. So what's your, what's your argument? <laughs> so you yeah, you can't buy it. anything you can't back up. Yeah, so you can't buy it. <laughs> you can license it. Uh, remember when we thought we were going to have like five and six gigahertz processors? Yeah. <laughs> for the last 10 years <laughs> AMD was pushing for that yeah, then physics we're getting better way. performing CPUs <laughs> but not necessarily always faster <laughs> I mean I mean Intel's already sort of kind of hit the 5 gigahertz uh, okay uh, yeah yes. they have actually the, for the latest Core i5 is pretty burst cool. <laughs> yes no no <laughs> the 990X what I mean yeah let me, I'm sorry. I'm at fault for not refining that base clock. Idle. Something that can just sit that without. requires a lot of power. <laughs> exotic. See, this is, this is what the problem we've run into. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but exactly. Like 99% of the time, this box that I'm running right now, which sucks down with a lot of power, it sits at 1.92 gigahertz. Oh yeah, I remember. That. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there we go. I remember reading sometime uh, the uh, graphite microprocessors mm -hmm. that, uh, or graphene, not graphite, graphene mm -hmm. microprocessors were going to be like the big new thing. Where are they? Ten years, Pedro. Just ten where more did years. they go? <laughs> yeah, I mean. A lot of it's possible, but I mean, this is the problem is like you immediately run into exotic cooling and unfortunately mm -hmm. anything outside of a mm -hmm. little block of aluminium and a fan is considered exotic cooling. And nobody wants to think, <clears throat> nobody wants to deal with water cooling in your business desktop. Mm. That's a lot of liability to be throwing around yeah. and sloshing about. <laughs> I mean, this uh, one of the things I waited as long as I did for buying Threadripper is because when Th Threadripper first launched, there was no air solution for it. It was all in. There wasn't any good water right. solutions. That's why inside of the case for a Threadripper process, you have an adapter to adapt uh, a regular. You know, it does. It doesn't cover the entire cold plate, just like in the middle, but it worked. Mm. And I waited for the uh, Noctua to finally show up, and that's what I have in there. Because you know what? Air coolers don't leak. Yep. Ah. Mm -hmm. At most, you oh, the, the bearing's gone a bit bad on the fan. Time to replace a fan. <laughs> Even if you go for the yes. Noctua's, it's like, okay, you're spending $30 on a fan. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, so true. Cinemetro, yeah, the the air coolers can be just as good as as liquid if it's done right. I mean, it, sometimes you'll get a little little better performance. The Delta is pretty close between both of them close. nowadays, uh, but I mean, then you got to boil down to like you know what size radiator you're going to be. I mean, in reality, yeah, yeah. and then you got to look at things space like space it takes. My heatsink yeah. has 140 millimeter fans on it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So. so does mine. Yeah. It's just the one fan, but I could put another one at the back if I wanted to. Mm. <laughs> like, 
Water's interesting, but now we got any fallen? Meter hack. <laughs> Meter. Meter hack. Thank you very much for the follow. What? <laughs> Feed me that banana. Meter. Feed it to me good. <laughs> <laughs> I love that name too. I, I, I don't know. Meter hacks. Uh, I think I'm good on cooling. I, uh, water. I've been doing water cooling for 30 years. But never in like that. That's a play around box. Yeah. Uh, here. Having that. <laughs> that bothers Relying me. on that, needing yeah. that to be mm -hmm. critical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'll trust an AIO now it's because yes, we've seen Much the reviews <laughs> of like the EK ones that came, uh, the first ones that truly supported uh, Threadripper. Those went bad. Those were Those really EK. bad. Those were Enermax. <laughs> Enermax, yes. I almost Enermax. bought one. I was willing to take that gamble. I was like, because that was Ugh. like, it was the affordable one too. And I mean, they were great coolers until they weren't. Because, <laughs> yes. <yeah. laughs> until the stuff started growing in the water and clogging and the they're microphone. They're persistent. They're on the third gen <laughs> of that. And it still does the same thing. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Like, nope. Yeah, but you, it seems like everyone else sort of kind of figured it out to the point where even like the more budgety brands like your Arctic's Corsair. Uh, okay, Arctic has some higher end stuff too, but like that one that I have on my uh, wish list, that's a 240 uh, or 280, and it is significantly cheaper than all the other ones. And every single review that I've seen of it, it people are going, "Yeah, it's pretty good." It, it's actually pretty good. <laughs> Aw. Thank you, Sandman. Hey, yes, Otherwise Andy. known as Altimore.sh. I, I, I love how this you put the dot SH I in expected there. to die in a fire, but it has been running, I think, almost a year now in Jackbox. And it mm -hmm. will. Now, let's be honest. It is running a 1700, so it's a 65 watt part. Yes. But it does it. And it's not running pegged the whole time, so... Yeah, <laughs> it, it's not shouty. I thought it'd be loud. It's not. And, um, yeah, I mean, if you're looking for like a HTPC <laughs> water cooler, mm -hmm. I'd recommend that eighty bucks. It's the the only big problem with the one hundred and twenty mil teeny tiny little AIOs is just that sandy. That's the spirit, man. <laughs> Water cooling yeah, because Sandman. you don't want to screw air cooling. Fan blades. Bad idea. <laughs> yeah, those teeny tiny ones. The, the only problem is that they don't have enough liquid in them to handle a sustained thermal load. They're, they're, it only has so much thermal mass in it. Yeah. I mean, you'll get the equilibrium, but I mean, that what, once you hit that... Uh, that's where it's going to hang out because you're going to be dealing with rad to yep. you know get rid like that thing will hold uh the 1700 at under a kernel compile which will load that little radiator up mm -hmm. it'll keep it mm -hmm. at like 52 yeah that's yeah all <laughs> that's day that's the big thing night. about water coolers yeah. it once it stabilizes it's not going to go anywhere for a long time until you really really uh go above the thermal mass at which point it starts running out of control and liquid starts evaporating and tubes start bursting. <laughs> the, yeah. <laughs> That's the, uh, <laughs> no, for whatever reason, dot SH is like, doesn't, the bot never does not. Through, yeah. <laughs> we don't know. I don't know what, it, what is a DMO OBS. I need answers to that before I can answer. DMO? I don't know. The Deb Multimedia? Oh. Deb Multimedia Repo. You should be, uh, if it's on Debian, yeah, you don't have the PPA, right? <laughs> no. Um, I use, uh, what version of Debian are you using? Mm -hmm. 
That is the current version. <laughs> 2713. Let's see, that was build date October 5th. Mm. Let's do see. And it depends on the plugins, so it should be pulling everything down. Well, the browser is not a plugin, Pedro. Oh, that's built in now, right? Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Okay. Does it uh, depend on Libsef? <laughs> like my advice to you is do what I do. Just build it. I've never used a... I mean, I, that should have the browser source in it, though. I don't see why it doesn't. Mom's willing to wager that it does. Let's see, 21, uh, 27.1.3 over here with the PPA. Hmm. And it does have the browser source. <laughs> well, there you are. So, yeah, I mean, it's Debian. Welcome to Debian. Just I mean, I haven't even done a guide. It um, is very much DIY Linux, <laughs> but with Debs instead of RPMs. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's why I said enable the uh, Deb Multimedia mm. Repo, mm. is because that's also going to give you your FFmpeg with your uh, NVN code and all the other fun bits that you're going to want to have for compiling your own OBS, which is wicked simple. And you got package build, so you can make your own um, Debs. That's what I do. I typically... book here that's technically mm -hmm. running Debian. It's Bunsen Labs, but, you know. <laughs> What's that, Bunsen? It's um, the continuation of CrunchBang, because CrunchBang, the distro, went away awesome. a few years ago. And Bunsen Labs and CrunchBang++ plus plus as sort of tried to continue that kind of ethos that they were going for. Yeah. And Bunsen Labs I is the best one, in my opinion. <laughs> Immersion cool. Yes, it is um, running on top of uh, Debian Bullseye, so. Bullseye. I will install the OBS from... <laughs> what, do you have the Deb Multimedia repo set up? I can enable that right quick. <laughs> yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah. This is something that'll take 40 seconds to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've always wiggle some more. Pedro, it entertains me. <laughs> I just want the browser so I can click on it. <laughs> That's how I used to get my GIMP animation plugin <laughs> extension for the GIMP. I like the idea of immersion cooling, and but in practice, it's just like. Um, was it fluorine or just oil? It's all great and good until the component dies. Aw. Thank you, Otto. Is it Prez? Because it's there's a three, so I'm trying to think of how to say it. Otto. I can't say 3 You don't three, talk three lead speak? No, it's Otto yeah. PR3Z. Well, it's lead. Yeah. No, uh -huh. it's number three. You gotta it's say Prez. Otto PR number three Z. <laughs> Auto. Yeah. Patrizza. I was right. Yeah. Leet. <laughs> Leet speak. <laughs> I've been using Leet speak since the 80s, so. <laughs> I do know it. That the whooshing sound joke? That was a joke. <laughs> Wishing sound? Wishing? Gone mocked it. Man, so, Pedro, what is that on Bullseye or on... Bullseye. Oh, all right, all right. So we're going to get some answers. I'm really curious. And yeah, if you're going to be building um, OBS yourself, there is a handy, handy 
guide on the OBS wiki. See, thought I was going to plug my own stuff again. I'm not. And I will tell you 100% out of the box it will work um, on Debian if you just copy and pasta. But you want to pay attention because there's a set for building with and without the browser source. Yeah, it is the wiki guide. I mean, it is linked. Go to Linux Gamecast if you don't want to search for it. And OBS install wiki. Then you scroll down, built from source, Debian based. There you go. Copy and pasta until you end up with OBS. It's everything you need. Make sure that you don't run this if you don't want a browser source. And yeah, even a check install if you want to create that. Or you can just run make install if you don't want to keep it in a package. Hashtag LGC cares. But I always make Debian packages because I have multiple versions of OBS. I have like <laughs> I have my um, educational OBS with Pulse Audio and stuff built into it. Then I have one that is that we're running right now, which is stripped. It doesn't support also It doesn't support Pulse Audio. It is Jack only. And I got some other compiler optimizations in there because I like to live dangerously. And this is the bit that will <laughs> take a bit longer because this is a Pinkers one gigahertz building. AMD Ooh. dual core processor. <laughs> so the download will be quick. It's the inst the actual extracting of the packages that will take a little while. <laughs> but I, I want you to um, capture a game at 1080p, no, UHD 60 and uh, complain that it's <laughs> It's installing. <laughs> Look at you being all above average. <laughs> Gosh. You hacker. There we go. There we go. That's how cool. quickly that bar that bar is filling up. So yeah. <laughs> but this is possibly my favorite netbook thus far. Very much. <laughs> Yes, I will update as soon as that's done. <laughs> cool. You can do it, man. I got faith in you. <laughs> yeah, we. I've had the debate. Um, like, should we in, set up um, like have a thing for the Debian build thing, like to enable the dev repo, like in the wiki? But I haven't fought for it. It's something you'll figure out. Like the dev multimedia repo has been around longer than the um, OBS project, so pretty sure it's good. Yeah, and it's kind of like uh, RPM Fusion. <laughs> it, it, it's that repo that you installed the moment you. There we go. Hmm. No, I, I want to skip the wizard, please. Um, right, off let's to see the wizard. add an element. <laughs> an element? <laughs> yes, a scene element. You mean a... Oh, you got at us. Well... Source element, yes. Yes, uh, that's there the There is no browser. <laughs> there is no browser uh, on the thing. You Let me get a screenshot. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> it should be directly under your black magic device. It has uh, audio capture device also, pulse audio, audio output pulse audio, color source, image, image, slideshow, jack input, uh, client, media source, scene, scene capture, um, screen capture. Text, VLC, uh, video capture device, V4L2, and window capture. 
do a search for uh, do an app search for OBS and browser. See if like for some ever reason there was an issue like shipping Ceph. Chromium is See, open yeah. source. Yeah, I, yeah. There's I, no I, browser there. Auto press. <laughs> Make sure it's not like an add-on package. I don't know why it would be, but let's just go ahead and cover all the bases. Yes, that's correct. Invalid operation search. Apt urch does not work, kids. Um, yeah, and it, it installs uh, version 27.0.1. That seems to be the version enough. that is. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not seeing a. Uh, yeah, there's nothing in apt search for. So, yeah, it just doesn't ship the browser. No, and hmm. it doesn't depend on libceph. So, yeah, it wasn't built with browser. So, moral of that story is, roll your own. Yep. <laughs> I am curious, can you get away with installing the uh, PPA on Debian? Uh, not actively recommended, but I, the... I'm, I'm not dumb enough to try. However. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can. Uh, you install the uh, software properties let, let, package. Let, 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 let me roll this. Have you personally done it? <laughs> yes. On Debian. Yes. For what That's reason? how I'm running um, Docbar X. By installing the OBS just... PPA? No. <laughs> okay, the question is, have uh, you installed the OBS? No, 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 no. This is not, that was not the question <laughs> at all. Yes. <laughs> no. Okay, no. We, we've deciphered the page reliefs. We got the answer. Thank you. <laughs> you can technically... I'm not it's asking if it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> if you've done that and installed OBS using the official OBS PPA in Debian. And the answer is no. So I don't know. This is the answer we're giving no, you. The OBS PPA, mm -hmm. I have not, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you can download the deb. And if the deb installs without complaining any, um, but complaining about any and mismatched versions of libraries. See, that's what I want to know. I want to know what the dependency resolution chain is going to Again, I'm not, I don't want to find out, but <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I could I'm get a little bit naive. Corbin 78. Did we just get rated? Mm -hmm. We just got rated. 24 people. Thank you, yeah. Corbin. <laughs> just in time. <laughs> yeah, just in time. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit after the show, but hey. <laughs> we're, we're having the real talk. Um, can you install the OBS? PPA on Debian 11 and cause it not to rip everything apart. Mm. It's just going to say that it needs a specific version and probably not even going to let you install any of the packages. See, as somebody, this entire shop is Debian. If you're running OBS on Debian, build it yourself. Just Get you uh, <laughs> welcome to Debian. If you need it pre-built, install uh, Pop OS or Ubuntu. Like you're on the wrong distribution. That's my advice. Well, oh, thank you, Auto Cinemetro, Press, yes. for liking my tweet too. <laughs> we did uh, absolutely cover the Streamlabs snafu. We gave it an honorable mention, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't steal stuff. Come on. Right. <laughs> they call me the great Plage Marissa, and I don't do that. <laughs> it shouldn't be something to aspire to. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe. You know, bold opinion. <laughs> what are you trying to do? Mm. Also, bro. What? Oh. Twenty-five 
127.1.1. Did you build that one yourself, Katana? Why are you using such an archaic version, man? You gotta use 27.1.3-1500 uh, <laughs> hashtag. Whatever they get. Yeah, yeah. GitHub speak after that. Um, that ref. I, I typically build OBS once a week, which is why I always use check install to keep a known working version. Hmm. Oh yeah, no, careful with the caps there. Uh, <laughs> auto press. Mm -hmm. The bot, it gets a bit angry. <laughs> <laughs> you can blame Ben for that one. <laughs> You're just better because it knocks out if you do like 30 emojis at one time. I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're adults. We don't speak with hieroglyphs. <laughs> well, give it another 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, typing in all caps. I don't know. Runes and moon glyphs are acceptable forms of um, written communication. Yes. Very cool. <laughs> See the Discord um the Discord emojis are fine because those use uh lowercase. <laughs> no, I'm just imagining it's a lot of I, I okay, that that just caused me to imagine this hellscape nice. to where there's capital emojis. The ones on Discord, <laughs> the codes to generate the emoji, most of them are um <laughs> Uppercase. <laughs> but then, then you're like gonna the end up total like, biscuit laughing, the lull, that's oh, all. Oh, oh yeah, but I, I, I'm thinking about like proper <laughs> <That> syntax <one. laughs> punctuation and grammar in emoji speak, which will eventually come to be in this hellscape. <laughs> poop needs to be the exclamation mark. <laughs> I want poop to be the exclamation mark, please. <laughs> please, oh, please. <laughs> oh, man. That. That would probably, this is, yeah, it'll end up happening. <laughs> I don't know. Emojis work. Smiley. Yeah, Scott, I like the ones that you, you put in. Scoops. Ah, smiley's <laughs> showing your age there, Corbin. <laughs> They're emojis now. <laughs> <laughs> spooky. There's nothing here spooky. <laughs> It's lovable. It's warm. It's inviting. <laughs> yep, that's that's Frank on the right hand side there. That's our, our lovable skeleton. He's our, our fifth host, honestly, on the shows. Who's, who's, it doesn't talk much. <laughs> oh, hang on. Fr Frank's the fifth. Tell me more about this mysterious fourth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh boy, I meant to say fourth. <laughs> what do you mean? The Christmas decoration? Oh, there's fun. Still got the candy. <laughs> yes, the, the, the Christmas jack o' lanterns. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Says someone who's going I to leave. I wonder if the neighbors. I wonder if the neighbors are going to keep the jack o' lanterns uh, in front of their place for a long time, because those pumpkins are starting to shrivel. <laughs> This, this is why you don't buy organic pumpkins. <laughs> That's why, Ben, I was thinking of five dudes. That's why. <laughs> I just realized. <laughs> you hear that, Steve? <laughs> I'm here all night. Try the shrub. Um... <laughs> No, I mean, this is always like the fun thing, man. It's like leaving out um, lawn decorations for the given like season and seeing how long you can uh, leave them out before somebody has the uh, courage to say anything to you. 
I mean, <laughs> they're not in my way. They're in front of their door, but I don't walk on their path. So it's like, eh. <laughs> I just can see them because it's not like they're behind anything. They're there. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Of, I don't know. There's got to be something like laughably passive aggressive you could do. Um <laughs> Uh, I'll just like leave a post-it and say, uh, great job uh, with the composting. I hope you put it to use. <laughs> uh, I don't know. There's got to be some things. All right, everyone. Um, it is coming up on 5.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I need time to go. To Nori's out. <laughs> uh, she had a... Uh, her first uh, art exhibition, yeah, but she it's a, not just hers. Just hers. <laughs> it's, hers oh, one. nice. <laughs> uh, she uh, it is her and a bunch of her classmates from university. Yeah. Since the university wasn't going to do the exhibition like they usually do for final oh, year students, COVID. because of yeah. yeah. So they got together, and uh, one of her friends and classmates, uh, their family has a pub. So he asks, like, oh, can we have, uh, can we just, like, hijack the walls of the pub for a couple of weeks and just have a, an exhibition for everyone? He's like, yeah. Aww. So she's uh, doing that. <laughs> Problem solved. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone. Um, let's see. Jordan will be back tomorrow with something. No idea. Terribly mysterious. And uh, Friday. I have no idea what I'm going to do Friday. Uh, there's one thing I might be doing, but another thing's going to happen, but that'll require some setup. So I'm just going to be terribly mysterious until like uh, 6.59 <laughs> on Friday. But hey, I'm going to be doing a thing. So uh, we'll see you then next show, actual show with people on it, doing things and stuff that in a show <laughs> format. It's going to be Saturday night, Linux Seamcast Weekly. They'll be uh, on the schedule on Twitch. Cleverly Disguised, yeah. starting at 8.30 Eastern Time. That'll be episode 483. So, uh, yes. <laughs> come tune in live. I, I should know. I've been there for everyone. Wonderful. Of them. Um, yeah. It's kind of like this, but with a more gaming centric stuff. And swearing. <laughs> and Pedro just turns into a swear bear. Yes. I like swearing. <laughs> I do. I really do. <laughs> quite few. There's very, very few words that I like quite as much as some of the swear words. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> well, you know how like the um, Goa XLR has like the bleep button. Mm -hmm. I thought about <laughs> setting that up, but just as a mix <laughs> minus direct at I don't know plus six dB. But only you hear it. <laughs> I just want to see how quick you can yeah, snatch off your headphones. <laughs> There's some level of trust. You used to be able to crash my X session remotely. And you only did that twice because yeah. you could. Yeah. <laughs> see, I'm not a good person. I just get bored easily. Like, that's old hat. All right. Um... Uh, we will uh, uh -huh. see you then. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> oh. Love you all. Bye, System T. See you in there. And Bye, good Corbin, there, Scott. 78. Yeah. <laughs>